Yo, 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 yo. What's up, guys? We're we're oh. live already. Are we live? Jeez yeah. Louise. Well, uh, let me put in my headphones because that might be kind of distracting, boys and girls. Um, hope you're all well. Anyone watching on YouTube? We got a couple of people. <laughs> a couple of people. Jeez Louise, you believers. My God. Useless much? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let's have a look. So, on my feed right now, I'm seeing rounders or softball, as you guys would call it. What are you guys seeing? I have the the they're doing the pre-fight like discussion of uh, Almeida versus Rosenstrike, just previewing the main event at the top of the card. Yeah, I'm watching uh, on ESPN. Back his fault. Plus. Hold on. Are you on? Yeah, it was on. Okay. I'm on. I'm on. Is this the ABC out, babe? ABC on that. Is it on ESPN Plus as well? It's on ESPN Plus, yeah. Well, I'm going to go to ESPN it's... Plus. How are we feeling, boys? I'm, I'm feeling, feeling great. Oh, man. You see the walk-ins? Johnny Walker's looking like a goofball. Anthony looks like a killer. It's, uh, you know, it's looking, all signs are pointing pointing to yes. Anthony, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, Anthony coming out in the Charlotte uh, basketball jersey, that really gave me, like, like, hometown kid vibes. You know what I mean? Like, I've been training in North Carolina. North Carolina is my home way more than it is Johnny Walker. Like, this is a home game for me. Well, I didn't see that bit, sadly. I've just, it, it, it's early in the morning. and Well, it's not early in the morning. It's midday, let's be honest. Uh, but I've been led in bed all morning. Here we go. Here we go. I've uh, been led in bed all morning, watching the fights, drinking coffee, doing my emails, doing my usual morning routine on a Saturday. Here we go. I'm seeing Anthony Smith spar. Yes. Yeah, he's yeah. looking good. Oh, yeah. He is looking good. Don't want to do that though. Don't want to go to you back and uh, accept a guillotine if possible. When, um, I, when I saw the you know, pre-fight stuff, it like I Anthony looks like a different dude than the guy that we hang out with every week. You know? Oh, for sure. We, you you go into killer mode. Do you know yeah. what I mean? He, he's you know Anthony's nice. He's thoughtful. He's polite. He's respectful. But when you're stepping in that octagon, you, there's got to be a mental switch. Um, you know, I said I had that birthday party to go to today, so I was like up in the air. I'm like, oh, the fights are on early. Great. Uh, I found out yesterday, I called the dude. Hey, man, how you doing? Uh, I said, what time should I get there? Thinking he'd say like 7 p.m. He goes, oh, get there about 2. I'm like, oh. what do you mean 2? He goes, no, it's it's a day party. It finishes at 7. I'm like, well, I'm going to be late. Okay, <laughs> just, just late. FYI. You know what I mean? <laughs> man, how are you fellas doing today? <laughs> We're doing great. Did you see the last uh the fight, Matt Brown? I didn't. I'm so annoyed. I, oh, I had a couple of things oh. because as I say, we just last minute, yeah, last sure. minute.com preparing presents and whatnot. Do you know what I mean? I I, I don't want to say what it was, but I thought of something good. So we had to uh, we'll give him a couple of old school pictures of us. So we had to pick out the pictures and stuff. I'm like, I've got to be on a live. Hurry up, quick, 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 because we've got to print them off and put them in a frame and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so no, I didn't see it. I thought it's gonna go a little bit. What happened? It was uh it was pretty wild. They were just uh squared off and guy threw guy went to go throw a couple punches. Matt Brown comes with an overhand right and just smokes him. One shot, walk off. It was Court oh, nice. McGee. It was Court McGee for the first three minutes, just just holding him against the cage, absolutely stifling him. The moment Matt Brown got in open water, one right hand. Oh, it was beautiful. You know what? Uh, listen, of course, beautiful. Well done to uh, Matt Brown. I love Port McGee. I feel so bad for him. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he, he he's such a solid dude. He really is. He really is. Let's have a look. I'll, I'm just looking on the YouTube page. How many people we got? We got 794 people watching. Thank you all for being here, ladies and gentlemen. We do appreciate you very much. First time we've done something like this. So as I say, thank you for being here. So I'm going to monitor the live chat as well and answer some questions. In the chat, I always do this when I go live on my YouTube page. In the chat, ladies and gentlemen, let us know where you're from. I do like to see that. You know what I mean? Wherever you are in the world, let us know in the in the, the comment section. And um, yeah, but here we have Alex Morono. Making the walk. What do we think here, boys? What's your what's your prediction? I like Alex Morono, man. I, I've always liked Alex Morono. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, Alex I mean, Morono. So, sorry, I'm just, go ahead. No, please. Michael Bisbeck. No, I'm please, not, please, please. Uh, I'm still Christ, setting go. Across. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know. I there was a part of me um 
Yeah, there was there was a part of me that just I see Alex Morono's face on a poster, and it's like, oh, it's going to be a rough night for whoever he's fighting. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely not. Alex Morono's legit. He's the real deal. Great fighter, good skills, good kickboxing. Tim Means though, Tim Means ain't no walk in the park either. But I'm just looking up on the wiki page. So last time out, that's right. He got stopped by Santiago Pontinibio. Morono, I'm talking about round three. Pontinibio's no joke though. What did you guys do last night? Anything fun? I mostly just work, Mike. I, I had a bunch of stuff to do. I started playing a new video game for a couple hours and then passed out. What was the I, game? I uh, I just picked up. It's an older game. It's called Darkest Dungeon, and it just is. It makes me angry. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe don't play it if it makes you angry. I'm just looking I in stopped. the chat. We've got New Brighton. We've got Soviet Union. We've got Stoke on Trent. We've got the Netherlands. Shout out smoking a pancake in the Netherlands. Uh, Bulgaria. Can you do Finland? Oh, Finland. I don't know how to do Finland, but I <laughs> think maybe they talk like this. I don't know. Scousers. All right, lads. The fucking Scousers are in the place. Yeah, mate. Hey, how good was Mike Perry the other day? Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen the episode that we just put out on Thursday, you got to check that out. Anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, Mike I... Perry's a, a motherfucker, dude. I love that guy. Yeah, he's I, the man. He's the I, man. Go on. I saw a lot of uh, like Bisping talking to like to actual like guys like Mike Perry to like dogs. That's like uh, there's just something about you guys going back and forth that I think people really enjoy, and I certainly did watching it. Yeah, uh, no, no, my, my my Perry, as we said on the chat, you know what I mean. He's it, it's very inspirational what he's been able to achieve. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Because a lot of people, and we should be talking about this right here because here's Tim Means making his entrance. But, you know, a lot of people, they struggle. They do this, what I was saying to Mike. You know, you fight your way up to being in the premier organization in the world. Then sadly, that doesn't pan out. And then you don't know what you're going to do after that. And you, know, you can go many, many different directions. And, of course, not being in the UFC is not the end of the world. But, you know, for some fighters that don't know much else, you know what I mean? It can be not the end of the world, but end of perhaps what's the word, what's the phrase I'm looking for? The, the, the end of like that could be the high point in your life. Do you know what well, I'm saying? In terms of your career, you know what I mean? But he's been able to parlay that into something very, very successful. So I'm so proud of him. Well, I, I think I think something that like respond like resonates with people is like, okay, this guy decided to bet on himself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like he yep. really went all in on himself. And I think that connects with fans more than anything. Like people who are watching that love that kind of a story. And yeah, Mike Perry's a uh, probably the best example in, in recent years. He's kind of going the, the Masvidal route a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Craig Chess what do we says, in uh, that go on. Perry sorry. has the whole continent of Africa behind him. <laughs> yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll keep those comments to a minimum. I saw, you know, when we had Perry on, I said, anyone got any questions for him? There was a lot of things related to that, shall we say? Yeah, man, <laughs> I would imagine. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's one of his more controversial takes. Yeah, well, he's a, he's a he's a good dude. We've got Anthony Evans in the chat as well. Shout out to Anthony. Look oh, at Bruce yeah. Buffer in right. the white tuxedo. Charlotte, you're getting the big deal. You're getting bloody Bruce Buffer looking at his finest. Man. You want me to send Anna a link? See if he wants to hop on. No, no, he's on, he's on, he's doing the polls and running oh, fair stuff enough. and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Love the podcast, really educational on MMA and fighting you guys, inspired to do better. Well, thank you, Mikey Cassio, GTR. This is, I've missed this so much. Like, <clears throat> you did San Antonio. I mean, this is Charlotte. Like, it's so nice to see outside of the pay-per-views getting out for these big events, these actual big fight feels. Uh, yeah, like in these cities that are 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 have been overlooked in the last couple of years. It's nice, and I, I think people are super on board with it. Yeah, no, it's always good to be back on the road. Don't get me wrong. The Apex is such a valuable tool for the UFC, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly through the pandemic, and, and even still to this day, but... You can't beat that feeling, being in front of a live crowd. You really can't. So here we bloody go. We're doing Man, it. Man, what what's, what's going to happen when Bruce Buffer uh, has to step away? Um, well, that's not going to happen for a very, very long time. Let's be honest. Bruce loves what he does, the passion that he has for it. It's unbelievable. It really is. Bruce is, let me tell you, because I've known Bruce for a long time now, ever since I started fighting, he always, he always, um, 
it was had the nicest things to say to me. Do you know what I mean? He really did. He always offered uh, advice and he was always just, just a solid dude. My, 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 my feed has frozen up. The link is not working too well, but no. Yeah. So Bruce Buffer ain't stopping this until the wheels fall off. You know what we, I mean? Uh, we got some super chats. Ryan we wants do. to know, uh, how do you guys think Anthony wins? Love from Morocco. Well, yeah. Love from Morocco. Shout out Ryan. Hope you're well, brother. Um, I mean, he said it best himself. He thinks he's going to catch him. He thinks he's going to put him down. And then in the scramble, he's going to lock up a submission. Um, and that's really, you know, I, I'm kind of on board with that, to be honest. I do believe that. I do think Anthony's the better martial artist uh, in general. But Johnny Walker is is a problem just because of his sheer talent. You know what I mean? The talent the man possesses, the power that he possesses is really, it's dangerous. It's oh, dangerous. Sure. And I was saying, I was led in bed last night saying to Rebecca, saying, I respect him so much because look at who we just fought last time out, Magomed Ankalaev. That man is not an easy fight for anybody. He takes him and then he takes on Johnny Walker. That is in many ways just as, or if not more dangerous, but doesn't have the same kind of cachet in terms of risk versus reward. You know what I'm saying? Saying because Johnny Walker on his day, if he's on form, he's, he's one of those guys he could beat anyone. He could what? be a champion. And Anthony Smith said, you know what? Give me that name. You know sure. what I mean? And you got to respect the balls on the man. Yeah, I mean, not to take anything away from Ankalaya, but that's not a fight you walk away from being like, man, this fight is is ending before the final bell. You know what I mean? An Ankalaya fight's going to be a grind, but I, I don't think many people go into that high level. Uh, light heavyweights go into that saying, I'm coming back with my shield or on it. Yeah, yeah. Morono looking good here. Throwing yeah. some nice fast punches. Tim Means just... A oh, nice head kick attempt. Corralling him up against the fence. Ooh. Nice body lock takedown. Right lands from Morono. Am I on? What do you have on my screen right now? What? I've got three minutes 45. Oh, I'm, we're, three I'm a little bit. I'm at three minutes and God oh, damn 57 you, right now. Sorry. Yeah, hold on. No, we no. Were... I'm on a delay. Yeah. I'm speeding up. I'm catching up. Literally and figuratively, with the fights in life, in my day to day, do you know what I mean? I'm trying my best, boys and girls. <laughs> Sid Sloan sent in two Ooh. bucks and uh, wants to know when we're getting right about now t shirts. Right about now. That we, would be a fun t shirt. We'll have those. That's a t shirt up. we're going to do. Oh my God. Who said that? Let me look at the chat again. Let me give you a Sid personal Sloan. shout out. Sid Sloan. Sid Sloan with the slogans. Shout out Sid Sloan, Sid Slogan Sloan. You know mm. what I mean? That's a good one. We're doing it. It's coming soon. It's going to be the first drop. The right about now. Yeah. What color are we doing with that? Never you mind. Okay. okay. That's a decision for down the line. <laughs> okay. It'll be black, slimming, masculine, you know, Rebecca Bisping's favorite color. What did you guys do last night? Uh, I tried to show my girlfriend the Kingsman. Sorry, my fiance the Kingsman, and she was not having it. No, that's such a good movie. I love that. Kingsman movie. one is great. Kingsman yeah, yeah. two wasn't as good. No, the you needed Colin Firth and Michael Caine. Like you needed the very distinguished, like gentleman British actors who've never done a Bond movie to do their Bond movie, and it was yeah, great. Yeah, no, I'm with you. Ooh, I'm with you. Big Ooh. shots from Moreno. Morano, I got 137. What do you guys got on I the I got clock? 127. Jeez Louise, I'm still behind. <laughs> the color. Oh, there we go. 120. There you go. I'm at 119. Yeah. I'm three seconds behind, boys, and there's nothing I can do. This California feed. Oh like my God, not only are the taxis through the roof, the laws are getting crazy. There's homeless people everywhere, but the UFC feed is three seconds behind. It's crazy. Jeez, You're please. much closer than I am to the UFC. <laughs> oh, no. Today, it's in North Carolina. Ooh, Rick Davis uh, in the Philippines. UK expat. It's 315, and he's up for this. I got Anthony. Nice one. Rick Davis in the Philippines. Hope you well, brother. Anthony Never Evans is yelling at me to keep reading Super Chats, so we're going to keep <laughs> going down the list right now. It's going to be uh, oh. Dustin Kilburn asks, Mike, on movie sets, are cups empty or full? When you... What do you mean cups? What kind like, of cups? Like oh, drinking building. cups? Yeah, drinking cups. Well, it depends because sometimes if, if that's a part of what you're doing in the scene, there'll be something in it. Like uh, 
So when I just did Red Sonja last year, this is an interesting thing. I, I, I won't give away the plot or anything, but in one scene, I'm eating, right? And my character, without going into it too much again, let's just say we're prisoners, if you will. And the food that we're eating, it is like, Ooh. what did they used to cool, call it back in like Oliver Twist Homeless? There's like gruel or gruel. something. It's just, it's just crap, right? And in the scene, I, I start eating it. They're like, no, you don't need to eat it. It's not very nice. I'm like, no, 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 I'll do it in the scene because it looks better. And like when you're acting, you want to do something with your hands as well because otherwise you're, what do I do with my hands? Right, so yeah. I, I'm eating the stuff. But we had to do that scene over and over about 30 times just because it's the way you do it. And then you get it from a different angle. Then you get it from this person's perspective and all the rest of it. But then for continuity, I've got to continue eating the goddamn gruel. And oh, it was man. disgusting. Do you know what I mean? So there you go. Hope that answers your questions. It <laughs> all depends. It was quite a little firefight there at the end of the round. Um, I don't even know who came out on top of that. Yeah, Morono yeah. was landing real big shots, and then Means had him almost out at the end of that. Uh, it was end of the crazy. Round. We got a couple. Mike more looks chats. like Elton John's lover. Well, I might look like Elton John's lover, but I wouldn't be able to know what it looked like unless I had the glasses on. And yes, contact lenses are a thing. They do exist, but I'm struggling with my contacts right now. You've probably seen it loads of times. I have to stick my finger in my good eye and I have to do it all the time. When I'm doing stuff like this, it constantly goes blurry. I can't read the comments. I can't read the chat. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm sticking my finger in my eye, which I've only got one. So a bit of a bacteria infection risk. You know you what I'm saying? So... You got to make the sure glasses, you don't have any poo-poo particles on your fingers. The Jeffrey Dahmer. There's no poo-poo particles on my fingers. Okay. <laughs> Just saying, remember, sure. remember, remember years ago on the podcast, we had the sponsor Omigo, and it was the yeah, good yeah. days. Yeah. We still rock those in our house. Ah. Shout out Omigo. We got but one of you the You know office. what? I will say this, though. They sent me one of their premium bad boys. This is a good fire, by the way. Yes. Uh, they sent me one of their premium bidets, and we love it. And it broke. And the five hundred dollars for the top of the food chain one. Right. So I messaged them. I Instagrammed Ooh. them. I said, "Hey guys, uh, you gave me one of your bidets. It's broken. You know, like, you want to send me one. another one, and I'll give you a shout out, or do you want to give me a discount or something Ooh. like that?" And Big head kick. Respond. Oh, oh, we had to spend oh, five hundred bucks. Alex Morono with a Ooh. five piece combo. What time have you got? I've got four nine four oh two. 403 I was at. I'm still behind. Yeah. No, there's nothing I can do to catch up. God we, damn. We can okay, yeah. Back. We'll pause. You pause for five seconds. I'm on four minutes. Okay. Pause it for a second and then go. Harrington's got the glasses on. Yes. Brian, where's your rose-colored spectacles, please? Oh, I don't have I don't have rose-colored ones, but I just have fucking... This is there the move. Go. This is no, how you do it. It. Oh, oh, nice takedown by Tim Means. Oh, big knee. Okay. Um, you're not pausing if you're saying big knee. 335, yeah. I'm at, Mike. 333. I'm okay. at 325. All right. I need I'll to. Be, I'll be I a like second Brian. Behind. Brian is pausing. He's playing the game. He's not trying to one up, you know, the namesake I'm... of the podcast. Harrington's way ahead, trying to steal, you know, the <laughs> line. Like, oh, great head kick. I'll oh, be behind. I, can, I don't care. You got better things yeah, to do exactly. than me anyway. No, I am. Uh... Yeah, I'm in the studio, so I need to go pause it for 10 seconds. Give me one sec. No, you're okay, buddy. You're okay. We're on 305. Just pause it like three seconds. Just we're all Ooh. in sync. Another takedown by the Dirty Bird. Ooh, guillotine attempt, though. He has his neck. Not not too many people hit uh, spinning back fists when they throw them here. Did he get it? Oh, yeah, he got him. He got it. He, he got, got it. got him well, with that guillotine. Alex Morono just... Being a ninja, uh, title. Uh, we got Rick Davies sent in a dollar ninety nine. We got, or Rick Davies sent in. Well, I don't know what that is. What's the P? Five Philippines. Fifty five Philippines yeah, dollars. Said he's the one who's up at three in the morning from the Philippines. David F yeah, sends in uh, a couple bucks too. Angela Cruz asks, title fight after if big win or one more. I would imagine he means she, they, she means he means yeah. Angel Cruz. I'm sorry, bud. Well, shout uh, out to Angel Cruz, and we'll get to that in just a second. But look at this guillotine here. Perfect. Nice technique. He's kind of on his side. Then he switches to full guard. That gives you more torque on it. You know, the, 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 the one leg over the top, you can get a guillotine like that. But when you get full guard, way more pressure, way more torque on the choke. Um, in, in regards to Anthony getting a title fight, 
I mean, listen, if he beats Johnny Walker prior to Ankalaev, he was on a three fight win streak, you know, so it's there. However, the thing is, um, Jamal Hill probably going to fight Yuri Prohaska. We don't know when that's going to go down. I saw an Instagram post, it's a rumor, uh, that it might happen sometime in the summer. Uh, so who knows? Maybe he might need one more if he wants to stay active, you know, but we'll see how it plays out. That's fair enough. Uh, Andrew Shepard sends in, was that five? Was that Italian? Is that what that is? Where are you seeing all this? Euro? This thing of mine. Uh, on the right side of the screen, you got the chat on the right side of the screen? Yeah. Oh, no, StreamYard? I'm, 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 not on, I'm not on StreamYard. I have uh, Clubber Watson, a uh, huge fan, Bisping, love watching you fight in the UK, even driving from London to Manchester in the middle of the night for Henderson. Love the energy. Let's hope for Smith to get back on track. Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. Clubber Watson. Absolutely. Shout out to Clubber Watson. Yeah, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Huge fan. Love watching you fight in the middle of the night. Yeah, that was a crazy one for Dan Henderson. Uh, it was four or five o'clock in the morning. You know, I thought no one's going to show up to this. I'm doomed. <laughs> I'll get my one pay-per-view fight in the UK and they put it at <laughs> five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no one's going to show up. Sold out in six seconds. So yeah. to you, Clubber Watson, and to everyone else that showed up, cheers, guys. There we go. In the Believe You Me glass. Hold on. Oh, oh it is sweet. a Believe You Me glass. You're getting all that the tests. sweet test amber nectar. Well done, Clubber Watson. I appreciate you, buddy. So, man. Andrew Shepard and Starstruck, big fans of me and Harrington. Thanks, thanks, friends. He loves the BYM podcast. Love from well, Ireland. Well, shout out to uh, you and Bloody Harrington. Then I guess I'm invisible, but whatever. whatever. <laughs> All right. Oh, come on. Yeah, I mean they 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 yeah they come for Bisping and they're like, yeah, all right, these guys can these guys can hang. They're all right. They can stay. They can yeah, stay. Yeah, yeah. We're cool with them. <laughs> I've still got so many bloody windows open. This is the thing. I, I, I did this all last minute. I've got mm -hmm. windows open galore. I've got one window with the fights. I've got one window with the YouTube. I've got one window with the stream yard. I've got the chat popped out. Now I've lost some. Uh, I have my Wikipedia page open so I can look at their records as we go. Yeah. Let's have a listen to uh, what he's saying. Can you hear that? Yeah, not from your side. I got it in my cans, though. So you can't hear what I'm hearing now. I don't. No. I don't believe I can. Well, that's good. That's good because I don't want it to get onto the stream and you know, get us taken down. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So it's that like was, the. Oh please! I was just gonna say that was really nicely timed by Tim Means though. He goes under the spinning back fist, shoots the double leg, gets it, and then Alex Morona. I mean, that is great reflexes from spinning a spinning back fist to then go to a guillotine as he's taken down. I mean, that is some really high level reactions. So like, is that the next step in the evolution? Like they, they used to say you don't throw spinning stuff, but it's like, you need to be able to chain submissions off the spinning stuff. If that's the route you're going to go. Well, I mean, spinning stuff is all well and good, but you know, people say don't throw spinning stuff. Spinning stuff's very effective, but you've got to set it up. You can't just be reckless with it. And sometimes some people, they're just too happy to do it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it looks wild. It looks fun. It looks entertaining, which we all like. And every fighter wants to be that guy. You You'll know? be on the but it comes at a price. You never want to show your back. Sekra Murtva says, love you, Hamilton. By the way, Bisping, what the F is a heme? I don't know. I don't know. What is a heme? What's a heme, Sekra? Sekra. Oh, I you feel like we're know. getting got. Yeah. <laughs> uh, St Steve Ruskin says, yo, Mike, Brian, and Big H. Shout out from Steve and Amy in Tavistock, Devon. Shout out, Tavistock. Uh, come on, Lionheart. I agree, Steve, from Tavistock, Devon. Beautiful Joe place. Know what you're drinking. Well, I'll tell you right now. It's a cheeky little Sapporo. I don't drink Ooh. this early in the day usually, but you know, I feel like special occasion. Special occasions. Can you see the stream all right with your dark glasses on there, Brian? I can. <laughs> and we, yeah, all right, that's fine. I'm doing all right. Um, oh, no, we got one here from Rob Templeton. I'm not sure if we did that. There, look at Connor. I'm pretty high. Yeah, 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 yeah. Connor's looking no, I swole. Am. He's not looking like he's getting down to 170 or 155 or anytime soon. Jesus, Jesus Christ. One... He hey, looks listen. 
so much bigger than Michael Chandler. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, but if and when, and when, when that fight happens, because the only, only reason I said that is because Michael Chandler said something recently, but if and when, or when the fight happens, he's going to have to lose some weight. I mean, he's probably not that heavy. I'd probably say 190, something yeah. like that. I'd say, yeah, I mean, he might be... He looks bigger than I was at 185. You know what I mean? So I'd, He doesn't I'd, look bigger than you now, Harrington. Oh, God, no. <laughs> God, no. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, buddy. That was a low blow. No, no, no. That has <laughs> always been... Genuinely, like, that's that's always been my benchmark. It's like, if I weigh about as much as Conor McGregor... Like, I'm about his size. So it's like, I should be... If I was a peak phys- in peak physical condition, I weigh about what he does. So now I feel better about like if I can get down to 195, I'm good. I want you to Bro. understand that just because you weigh the same doesn't mean you have the same no, no, body no. type. Harry, Harry Jr.'s body type is that of Conor McGregor at 145 <laughs> pounds. You know, we all know. We've said it for many years. That is what Harrington, you know, that's what he bases uh, his look on. That's how you get there. You got the shirts, although they are a Dylan Dannis version of McGregor's shirt. Oh, was, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. I'm <laughs> H&M shopping, doggy. It, I was going to give him Poirier hey, style, nothing, like, you know? Nothing wrong with H&M. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Dylan's, Jim Newman says, basically, can you tell Dylan Haddock 98? 98 reps when 100 was agreed is absolutely feeble. And can you tell him Newman would batter him? Well, Dylan Haddock, to be fair, if the set, if the goalpost, if the benchmark was 100 and you hit 98, that's a fail. That is, I don't care how close you were, Dylan Haddock, you suck, bro. And (laughs) Jim Newman's going to batter you, pillar to post, all over the place, just like this guy is. right. Oh, Carlos Olberg. I like watching Carlos Olberg fight, man. So fun. So, so there's so a fun. lot of people in the chat. There are uh, almost 2,000 people watching right now. Well, thank you all for being here because it is truly appreciated. It's the first time we've done something like this, and we will make a habit of doing this. Uh, but 2,000 people, thank you for sharing your Saturdays with us because I know there's a lot of places you can be right now. So, as I say, very, very much appreciated. And uh, hopefully, it's worth it. Brian the Smooth Criminal. I'm fucking killing it with. Oh, sh- sorry. I'm, uh, I'm doing it with these glasses here. You can take them off. We, we put them on for a laugh. You don't have to keep them on the whole time. No, I think I think I'm I think I'm more comfortable like this to be completely honest. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, okay. I'm definitely. Uh, so I do enjoy Ehor. He's the he's the guy who uh, Shogun fought his last time out, and you know I don't know. He looked dangerous. E- Ehor Pateria, yeah, that's right. Yeah, stop Shogun. To be fair, you know. With the absolute maximum respect to Shogun Hua, it was it was a how do we it was say like it? Ali's it, last fight. Yeah, you know what I mean. It wasn't Shogun in his prime. Let's just put it like that. But still, he went out there. He beat the man in front of him. You know, he's a big dude. I'm trying to get a bloody Wikipedia page up so I can see people's heights and records and stats and info and all the rest of it. And I'm going to do it right now. Uh, but he beat him, and he beat him in style, if I remember correctly. Yes. Uh, yeah. First round KO. It's first round TKO. Yeah, it was. Uh, that was on the. That was at the Brazil card earlier this year. It was one of those sadder, sadder moments in MMA, I believe. Not yeah. taking anything away from from Eeyore, just uh, Eeyore, right? Is Ihor? that his name? Ihor? Eeyore, 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 Eeyore. Yeah, Ihor. From, uh, what was it called? Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's from Ukraine. How do you say that one? Ihor Potaria. That's Italy. Ihor Potaria. Love the podcast this week. Mike Perry is the man. Could you see him returning to the UFC someday? You know, Kane Barker, you never know because um, look at Nate Diaz. The way he was talking. Look at Nate Diaz, though. I mean, Nate Diaz party ways, as we know, he's going to fight Jake Paul. His master plan is to come back to the UFC and become a champion again. Grandiose goals and terms, uh, uh, goals, but good for him. You know, and I would love to see Nate Diaz back in the UFC. A lot of big fights. If he can beat Jake Paul, obviously star increases massively. Uh, so he'll have good negotiating power. There's that third fight with Conor McGregor. And you never know, you know, Leon Edwards and him had a, had a, a fight and obviously rocked him in the fifth round. I see Leon dominating for some time, to be honest, you know. Uh, so, yeah, you never know. I would like to see Mike Perry back because if Nate Diaz can come back, I think Mike Perry can as well. Uh, thanks for the 10. Is that euros? 10 euros, Rob Templeton? 
Hey guys, huge fan of the show, and Bisbing is my all-time favorite fighter. Thank you guys for providing so much great content. Super nervous, excited for our guys to fight tonight. So and who was that? We. Sorry, because I don't see it on my one. Rob Templeton. Rob Templeton. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that more than you'll ever know, honestly. Uh, being a retired fighter and still interacting with the MMA community, obviously through this podcast. And a big shout out to Brian and Harrington, because, you know, for all you people, you think I, 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 you know, we bully Harrington and talk shit and all the rest of it. This, you two are the lifeblood of this podcast. You really are. I, and, and, and and that doesn't, I, I do say it occasionally in between giving you both shit, but, <laughs> um, but, but all jokes aside, that's truly how I feel. You know what I mean? And it wouldn't be the same without you. It certainly wouldn't be the Believe in Me podcast and the energy and the notes and the preparation and everything that you bring to it is truly appreciated. And I feel like everyone else agrees as well, uh, even though they all say F Harrington on every single <laughs> thing. Well, I mean, that's a t-shirt we're going to do. We're doing an F Harrington t-shirt. We're doing a right about now. And we're doing an F <laughs> Harrington. The one I said, Harrington, you, a mugshot, you know, with the glasses on, a bandana, and F Harrington, but in like the numbers that you get in a mugshot. So keep an eye out for that one. Greetings, guys. Love from Saudi Arabia. Shout out Saudi Arabia. Hope you're all well down there. Hope you're not boiling your tits off. If you're outside, I hope you've got sun cream on. Uh, you're probably not, though. Hellfire 101 wants to know if you've ha ever had a pint on Wiggins, Wigan King Street. 100%. I've been to King Street many a time for a night out in Wigan. So I can't remember the name of the place. Uh, oh, well, I said many a time, a few times. I used to go to a nightclub called Wigan Pier. So sometimes we'd go to uh, King Street first, have a few bevies. You know what I mean? Check out the scene, see who's about. Have a little look at the ladies, you know yeah. what I mean? Obviously, back in my single days when I was young, single, ready to mingle, DJ Mikey B trying to flex. Uh, what do we think of Brian Shaven's face? Sexy, looks 12 year old, sexy, <laughs> looks so 12 years old. That is not a sexy look, Anthony Evans. No 12 year old should be described as sexy. You are gonna <laughs> cause us problems. Oh, Ending dude. that poll, close poll. Did I just put up a poll? <laughs> you put up a poll. Looks sexy like a 12 year old. Okay, was was it was it look sexy or looks like a 12 year old? Were is those this a replay we're seeing, or is that fight just happened? What Ehor ver uh Ehor versus Ehor. uh Carlos? No, no, it's, yeah. it hasn't started yet. No, we're still uh we're still doing <laughs> yeah. promo stuff. That's why we're just just yeah. bullshitting. Okay, filling time. <laughs> can I tell can, can can I talk about this? And this is really, really sad. It's so sad, and I'm, I'm even though I don't probably look like it, I am. It's it's just awful. I had some terrible news yesterday. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, so the guy that works at my gas station, and I've lost the, there. You are the gas station by my house. There's a guy called Will that works there. Young guy, I'd say. I don't know. I'd say about twenty three. I only know him from going into the gas station. And he's like six foot nine. He's a big dude. He's a heavy dude as well. He's got a big, long ginger ponytail. He's the nicest guy. We would always have conversations. Every time I went in, I'd stand and sit and chat for about 15 minutes with him. You know, he was always so respectful. He was a hardworking guy. He was always in the, the Circle K at the gas station. When he's not there, he was working at Pet Boys. You know what I mean? And I would always give him advice and talk to him about life. And, like, you know, there was this girl that he liked. So I was like, dude, just text her and this and that. And he had an issue recently where... You know, he's diabetic and the police were in this bar and he kind of passed out uh, because of his diabetes issue and they arrested him for being drunk in a public place and he was all stressed out. I'm like, dude, don't worry about that. Don't worry. It is what it is. It's not the end of the world. And he was always like, Mr. Bisping, you should be a motivational spooky. Whoa, you always make me feel good. He was always so positive. Ooh. He was so, so, so friendly. He was just like, I swear to God, he really touched my soul. Yeah. And I went in last week and... um. The guy that worked there, he said, oh, listen. Uh, I said, where's Will? He said, oh, w w Will's not doing too good. He's in hospital. Mm. I said, oh, shit, really? What happened? He said, yeah, he uh, uh, he had a bad fall at work. And I said, oh, right. I said, well, I said, give me his phone number. Because I only, you know, he's my gas station buddy. You know what I mean? So we weren't hanging out, so to speak. I said, give me his phone number, please. I'll shoot him a text. Or I'll give him a call, cheer him up a little bit. Uh, and then obviously with life, because I'm so busy, I didn't do that. And I went into the gas station yesterday and the woman that worked there, I said, oh, how's Will doing? Because as I walked in, I thought, crap, I was supposed to call him. And I walked in, I said, how's he doing? He's dead. 
He died. You know, I, I don't know what it was. There's some complications when he got in hospital and he's passed away. He was only like 23 right. years old. And, you know, I mean, I know this means nothing to no one. He's just some random dude in a gas station. And that's breaking my heart as well because he was so full of life and so positive and so energetic, you know, and I Googled his name last night and there's no talk about it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if you have someone on a certain scale, then it matters, but he's just being fucking forgot about and life goes on and, and it's, it, it's true. People die every fucking day. And I know this is bringing the mood down, but I was in tears last night and just thinking about it this morning and breaking my heart because you know, his life is just as important as yours or mine or anyone's, but no one gives a shit. And it's not now obviously he's not of a he's not a notable person, he's just a dude from the fucking gas station. You know what I mean? But I guess my message is though, guys, live your lives. Live your lives because I know this is a cliche saying tomorrow isn't promised, and it really isn't. Do you know what I mean? There's a guy there, lovely guy, whole life ahead of him, and now he's dead. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So make memories, guys. If you're listening to this, go out there, make the most of your lives, live your lives to the fullest, make memories because you never know what's in the future. Anyway, shout out, Will. Big love and respect. Condolences to your family. I, <sighs> it. I anyway. quit. I'm I'm going out. <laughs> I'm going I'm to go to the park and do cartwheels right now. <laughs> no, yeah. shit. Go fucking mock Will's death. I'm not. <laughs> He's not. No, like that is oh, the God. truth. Like it is. Like you should get out and like smell the fresh air every now and then because you never know when it's going to go. Um, no. And, you know, family is the most important thing for a reason because that is ultimately all that. Uh, they're the ones who are going to say your name when you're gone. Way no, longer than anyone I, else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many people we got in the live chat right now, guys? Because my bloody. 2085. 2085. 2085. Big shout out. You guys know what you're doing with your weekends, don't you? Choose we got, it right here. We got quite a few super chats uh backed up here. We got Matt Walsh just sent five bucks. Appreciate that, Sh bud. Shout out, Matt, Matt Walsh. Underbelly 1996 Cheers. is asking for a dirty Mike and the Boys t shirt. I think that's Dirty Mike and the boys, too. that's another one. Make a note of this. And so we're doing the F. Harrington. <laughs> we're doing the right about now. And we're doing the Dirty Mike and the boys. Yes. We're going to have a whole like fall collection. It's going to be great. But, no, we are. We are. Because I've been doing some talks with some different companies. Because I got some merch done. I'm going to tell you right now. If you see the merchandise on, on, the, on, the, on the YouTube channel right now, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Because I asked for some samples to get sent to my house. And I thought the quality was terrible. I really did. I was not impressed with the quality whatsoever. So we're, we're changing suppliers. We're getting new designs done. So so right now, don't buy any. Just wait for the new drops to come. And then we will all have them and wear them and publicize them. Buy those ones. I, I Honestly, when I saw the samples, I was like, this is ridiculous. You can't expect hard, uh, hardworking people to part ways with the money. And the quality is that bad. Do you know what I mean? So please don't buy any of the merch right now. I have not tried the uh, the, the new T-shirts, but I am excited to get back in on the merch side because I feel like they've they, we've just been hit with so many great ideas for shirts that uh, yeah, they got to get those out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are Bisping's glasses inspired by Dharma? No, they're not. <laughs> okay, unable to play this video. Oh my god. Oh, on your side? Yeah. All right, I'll go pause again. No, no, don't no. Keep it going because I'll catch it up. Okay. Is it is it on ESPN Plus as well? It is. Yes, that's where I'm watching it. I'm watching it on ESPN. The Plus. customer is not authorized. It's on. No, sorry. Is it on? Am I on ESPN Plus? I am on ESPN Plus. Talk amongst yourself, boys. Oh, <laughs> oh we sorry. need to. You probably need to put in your uh, cable information, like your DirecTV information again. Hey, back. I... Oh, she might be in the shower. Oh, we got problems, guys. <laughs> Throw some questions at me, boys, while I while I fiddle about like a total boomer in the background. Uh, hey, guys from Barnsley, did Harrington get that shirt from Jeff Molina? Uh, I don't know who Jeff Molina is. Do you? Yeah, he's a UFC fighter, isn't it? Jeff Molina. Yeah. All right. Well, now I feel like a buffoon. Um, I look not like a buffoon. I do, yeah. but I honestly, All right. it's, it's what fits me right now. <laughs> Fight and start. Paused again. Yeah, it is. I see him walking out, and now it's doing the circle thing to refresh. Oh man! Oh god, my lord! Potier oh. starts just shooting. Gets nothing. Well, that's a good idea against Olberg. Olberg is dangerous on the feet. Hey, Rebecca! Oh, what? Olberg just snapped his head back with a like a just a Anderson Silva face kick. Yeah, I don't think it connected though. 
It just, yeah, but it like snapped his head back a little bit. All right, I'm on 423. I'm on, okay, you're ahead of me, even nice. Yeah, same. All right, all right. 420. At least, at least now I've got a feed. Some kind of bloody fire companion, this is. My God. Right. <laughs> See, this is the thing. People go, oh, Bisbee didn't do this. Bisbee didn't do that. He thinks he's big time. No, I'm useless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can fight people in an octagon. I can talk about fights in the octagon. Other than that, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like nothing's intentional. It's just that I suck. No, come on. You run this whole it, podcast. It's called self deprecating humor. That's all. <laughs> right. I know. I'm the shit. I get it. So, um, Ulberg has really been growing into his own lately. Obviously, you know, he had some mixed results when he first came here. He had so much potential on the contender. He looked fantastic. Uh, he's paused again. My feed is doing my fucking head in. Yeah. I think that he had, uh, what, one loss to uh, Kennedy and, and Zetchiku. Kennedy and Zetchiku. Right. And then that was on a three-fight win streak. Right. Um, doing fantastic. Yeah. I think Eeyore, uh one and one in the UFC so far. Has the the TKO victory over Shogun? Oh, Ooh, big shot! Uh, all right, both men center of the octagon. Rob Templeton wants to know for uh, he sent in a big tenor, and he wants to know if uh, if he were to send in some questions, are they likely to make it on the show? Oh, Ooh. never mind. Allberg with us. Yeah, 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 he's out. Yeah, it's out. No, oh, yeah, okay. It's done. I see Olbo jumping on the fence, but yeah. it's doing my head in because um, it keeps pausing up. So I'm going to go to my phone and prop my phone up and do it that way because coming through my computer, even though I've got a big daddy pimp, multiple terabyte, top of the food chain computer, it doesn't seem to want to fucking work. Oh, man. All right. So ESPN Plus, what have we got? There we go. So, Rob, if you're trying to get, uh, if you're trying to get questions on, just, just keep them quick. You know, keep it to a minute, a minute and a half. Try not to go on for three minutes, four minutes. We don't have that much time at the end of the show. That's, that's all I'm saying. Correct, Amando. All right, you guys, give me a question if you want, Brian, whilst uh, I try and sort this out. Let's have a look at the chat, see what's going on in the chat. Our Bisping's glasses inspired by Dharma. Uh, and chill out on the polls a little bit, mate, because I can't see the bloody chat. Uh, love the podcast this week. Yeah, let's see, that's old. Uh, Have Keith Peterson should be fired from the UFC. Why? What happened there? That was a pretty rough stoppage. Yeah. Was it really? Yep. I mean, there was four different times where Brian and I were like, okay, it's over. Okay, it's over. And then <laughs> Uber just walked away. He's like, I'm not hitting this guy anymore. And, and then, then Peterson Keith Peterson like, jumped okay. on. Yeah. I'm, I'm I didn't asked, want... uh, Brian, was Michael Bisping's dig at you being crusty during the revent Al Jermaine Sterling interview because you to shave your face looks good. Oh, and I said crusty, oh, crusty and dusty. Or dusty? Is that no. why you shaved your face, Bri? No, I assumed he wasn't even talking about me, to be completely honest. <laughs> so you thought I was both crusty and dusty? I was like, I'm definitely crusty in that in that argument. <laughs> like in that description, you're dusty, I'm crusty. Fine. <laughs> uh, but now you're you you like, I'm going to call shame. Rebecca one second. Giant sure, yeah, yeah. We'll because cool, my cool, feed cool. isn't working. I'm going to plug off. in the cable. So I'm going to okay. mute myself. You know. I'm just All gonna, right. I'll do that do, while do, he's do. muted. And uh, no, that, that wasn't, it wasn't a real dig. He was just kidding. Keith Peterson should be fired from the UFC. Yeah, that's, uh, that was, I, I'm not agreeing with you. I'm just saying. That was that was a tough one. Oh, you back, Mike? You back? I'm Hello. back. I'm back. Hell the yeah. feed seems to be working now. You're literally just missing the action of the uh, of the most exciting fights. So there we go. Eho goes in swings, misses, big follow up shots by Olberg. Doesn't look too bad so far. Keith Peterson isn't stepping in. I mean. And then he steps up. Oh. Somebody said that that, that was a bad stoppage by Peterson. It I, I thought it there. was. I thought it was late. I mean, Olberg walked away before Keith Peterson waited a second and then told him you should stop. I tell you what, Carlos Olberg is a problem. 
He's, he's got fucked. a very, very bright future, man. If, if his takedown defense is catching up and getting better all the time, which I assume it is because is his takedown defense is sensational. If he is putting in the same kind of work on that side of things as what Izzy is, which again, with his um, uh, Eugene Barrowman, his coach, I guarantee he is doing that. He's going to be a problem, man. He really is. Eric Huggins says, listening to you guys on my delivery route, always listening to your podcast and got chaos. Love you guys. Anthony Dub tonight, F. Harrington. Thanks, Eric Huggins. Drive safe, brother. Hope you're well. And uh, thanks for supporting the show because we love each and every single one of you. We do. Every time we do this, I have the best. I have the best time. You know, sometimes I'm having a miserable day. I come in here, I do the podcast with you guys, and I'm like, I'm good again. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> that is like, uh, there, there is something, yeah, there, there's something about like, all right, my day, okay, look at that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, there, there is something about like, okay, BYM is done. Like, that is the, there is just like a bliss that hits me for like an hour or two after oh. where I'm like, man, that was great, bro. I like actually got to do something fun for two hours. We are raising a weirdo. By as a, merch for as Father's, Father's Day, Day merch. <laughs> I'm assuming that's a dig at me. Oh, that's not nice. Michael, you never told the story about how I met my wife. I think I've told that probably about a million times. Now's not the time, but I will tell that story soon. So Bobby Atkins asked a while back, has Big DC and Little DC squashed their beef? It's okay, babe. It's I don't know now. who Little DC Sorry, is. Darling. Cruz. Oh, right. Oh, oh, you mean from when they um, they had that little thing where Cruz yeah. kind of like said he doesn't do his research? Yeah, they're fine now. In fact, they're working with each other on TV. You know, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably why he asked. He was like, are they faking it? Let's have a look. Do, you think, uh, do you think Gary gets the knockout here? I'd like to think he does. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, Thanks to God. I know there's a lot of religious people out there. There is, so I don't want to offend anyone. And I respect everyone's beliefs, but if there is a God, like, I don't think he has a favorite in the MMA fight. <laughs> I don't think he's like, you know what? Tonight I'm going to give it to Cole Olberg. I'm going to twitch my nose. It's done. Boom. Olberg. No, man. Uh, still, what I get from that is that God definitely likes Olberg way more than the other dude. Well, he likes Olberg <laughs> a lot, doesn't he? Because he's got the six foot four model looks, you know, ripped to bits, world class skills. Yeah, he's favored him big time. God loves him way more. Yeah. Maham, Mahaned Mahdi says, Matt, your career means so much to me. I struggled with mental health and seeing your career helped me to believe in myself. Eight amateur boxing fights later, I'm a Golden Gloves champion up in Alberta. Yeah, Mahaned, man. well done, brother. Well done. That's awesome, man. And thank you for the kind words. But um, yeah, keep going, brother. Eight amateur fights. As long as you're enjoying yourself, be safe. Wear headgear when you're sparring and all that stuff. But keep going, brother. And keep me updated. Keep sending in comments and stuff like that. Keep us in the loop, please. Okay, I don't even want to read that one. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh... No, someone says it. No, the B way ep- regarding we are raising a weirdo. Okay. T-shirt. Someone says it. No, the BM episode with Jesse on fire. Michael told the story of how his son was eating cereal with a fork. And he said <laughs> to he told Rebecca, we are raising a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, she, she, he doesn't do it anymore because he didn't really have cereal too much. But yeah, she was allowing him to bloody, you know, eat breakfast with a cereal with a fork. I can't tell which no truth. one does. All right, I... anyway, let's talk about this real quick. Ian Gary versus Daniel Rodriguez. That's the fight that's coming up now, right? It right. is. It is. This is I, I'm really, really interested in this one. Ian Gary has proven to be you know, the potential of something special. He certainly believes in himself. Some may say cocky. He is cocky, but he's having a laugh. I don't know if you saw him last night or the night before the Waynes. He was putting pizza boxes outside d Rod's door. <laughs> knocking so on the door. funny, dude. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a good sense of humor. He's cocky, but listen, you're supposed to be. I think he's still undefeated, right? So, but against D-Rod, this is a step up. Yeah, he's 11-0. and 0. Last time out, fought Son Canan. Got clipped in the first round, almost finished, but came back and got a stoppage in the third round. Daniel Rodriguez, it's a tough fight. It's definitely a step up from some of the other opposition he's fought. So I am genuinely intrigued in this fight. But look at how crisp and sharp his striking is. 
Yeah, so that I, I, that's why I was asking. Like, do you think do you think he's gonna find the the KO here? Because he is he's a massive favorite. But I feel like that's always my question heading into an Ian Gary fight. So far, is like not whether or not he can get the job done. It's whether or not he's gonna get the finish. Well, I, I mean, he's sorry. stepping up in competition, though. You know what I mean? No disrespect to some of his previous opponents. You know, like Gabriel Green. We saw him earlier tonight just get knocked out. That's true. And what was one of the worst game plans ever. And Gabe Green's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. I'm not talking bad about him. In fact, I put a tweet out earlier. That is why strategy is an important aspect of mixed martial arts. The way he fought his opponent in those opening seconds was like it was the final 10 se seconds of the fight and he was behind on the scorecards. You can't fight like that. So anyway, going back to Ian Gary, this is a step up. Daniel Rodriguez is good on the feet. He's tough. He hits hard. So I'm genuinely curious about this fight, you know, because it, it will... It will answer a lot of questions. If Ian Gary can go out there and smoke D Rod, then then it says, "Hey, we got something special, and this guy is on is on the right path, and the trajectory is towards being a serious contender one day." But we'll see what happens. I'm worried that Ian Gary keeps his chin too high, a lot. I mean, it does happen. How many people's in the chat, Bri? I can't seem to see it on my face. 2,486 people are watching us right now. Right about now, you <laughs> 2,000 and your 400s and your 86s. It's quite, it's quite a few. Uh, you know, i got to stop doing that because everyone tells me it's racist. I'm not being racist. You know, last night I was watching a comedian and, and I'm not even going to say it. I'm not even going to say it. I was watching a comedian last night and he was doing a bloody accent of bloody... Italians, Spanish, Germans, every part of England. He was doing Irish. He was mocking the Northern Irish accent, you know, and then he did a bit for about 20 minutes about how he looks Asian. There was not an Asian accent to be seen. Do you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and I get it. But you know what I mean? I, 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 and I get it. It's like, guys, just everyone just needs to fucking lighten up. You know, anyway, whatever. Moving on to, let's go back to the fights before I get cancelled. My God. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, I want to know who this comic is now so bad. Michael McIntyre from the UK. Oh, uh, oh, Gary yeah, is boring, guy. says JP. Ian Garrett no. is not he, He's far from boring, man. That's he trash. Far it's crazy to boring. say, I think. I'm not discounting your opinion, but I think it's wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Brian was Michael Biz. Oh, well, we did that one already. We got any other super chats we haven't got to, Brian? Uh, I believe we do have quite a few. I need to find you again. Oh, there it is. All right. So we got uh, right. C. Johnston says, uh, here's five, just one big money on Morono. Please give some to Will's family. Oh, Matthew, Matthew Robertson. You, 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 you know, I'm going to go to his, uh, I'm going to go to his Memorial. funeral. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Because when I went in the gas station, check this out as well. And this really, the woman that told me that he died, um, said his mother wants your phone number, if that's okay, because he spoke about you all the time and what, what, what a big impact it had on his life. And again, that just broke my heart. So yeah, uh, hopefully I'll go to his family, uh, his funeral and say a few words. Anyway, sorry, go on, Brian. Uh, Matthew Robertson sent 10 in. Speaking of memories, Bisbing, watching you spark Rockhold at 6 a.m. is a fond one. Cheers for the podcast, oh. lads. And how, <laughs> how way who said that? This is Matt, Matt Robertson. How way is that? How way, man? Uh, how way, all right, man. cool. It's cool. how talking Newcastle pet, right? How way, man? How way, the lads? Thank like, you, Matt Robinson, man. Because I, I figured that was a sign I didn't know. I can't do my bloody my, my Jordy accent, man. I've been out in the. <laughs> I've been out good. in the for too long. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have. I used to be able to go, do good regional accents, and now I've lived in America for so long. It's 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 it's, it's dipping. It's you just get on this next one, Stacy Younggren. You know what I mean? Needs to be merch, please. We need to get a hat that says, like, you know what I mean? Ant Evans, if you're in the background, we need a list of these because you're right. You know what I mean? I'm writing them we down. We need the F. Harrington. We need the, what was the other ones? Right about now? Uh, Dirty Mike and the boys. Right about now. Dirty, Dirty Mike, Mike and the boys. boys. No man alive. Peace <laughs> mode. No man alive can beat me, can beat Ian Gary, can beat my son. No man alive. Irish Sam oh, sends in uh, 250 just for funsies. I appreciate you, Sam. Big up, Sam. Oh. That'll be a nice little pint for the boys, for Dirty Mike and the boys. <laughs> Irish Sam made it. That's cool. Uh, 
Bobby Atkins. Thoughts on Big Tom's return against Tybora? Mm. We did very, talk about this on the last episode. Very excited for Tom Aspinall. I mean, Marcin Tybura, A, nice guy. Two, great fighter. Three, tough matchup. Uh, I'm commentating the fight, so I don't want to, you know what I mean? I, I can't give predictions and things like that, but I have spoken very publicly many times about the bright future that I believe Tom Aspinall is going to have, you know, but you got to get it done on the main stage. He's coming back after an injury, right back into another main event. That's three main events in a row for him. So, that I mean, that 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 shows. Uh, Harrington disappeared for a second, but uh, the wrong Frank, the guy who makes all the art for the show, that's Francis over here. He make he he's what he wants to know how would Harrington fare against boxing Schaub? This is a crazy question, <laughs> and we get asked. I get asked this in the in the YouTube live chats all the time. People are like, "How do you think you and Harrington would do against Brendan Schaub?" You know what the answer to that is? He would murder us easy with no hands. That's the question. <laughs> yeah. That's like the real answer. <laughs> yes, it is. People in the chat saying, "What am I drinking today?" This is a it's a, very, very, it's, it's a sapopo sapporo. Um, listen, guys. I mean, come on. Let's just let listen. I feel for Brendan Sharp. The man gets so much hate. Do you know what I mean? He puts himself out there, granted. You know, he does a lot of content. So, therefore, you know, he's a successful dude. And I get that he might have hijacked his way into the comedy scene and all the rest of it because he's friends with Rogan and all the Don't rest of it. Don't be mad because you're not cool enough to be friends with Rogan, straight. You can't people. hate the man for being successful. Do you know what I mean? And the reality yeah. is, he's six foot four. He was a heavyweight. He was a decent fighter in mixed martial arts. He's a black belt Big in Brazilian boy. Jiu Jitsu. Dicey, dicey on that one. Uh, but apparently so. Uh, he would, he, 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 it'd be a problem for most men on planet Earth, you know? Yeah. Even in his tight jeans. <laughs> I bet you they're those stretchy tight jeans that Jocko sells. I like some tight jeans, though. I'm not going to lie. So, you know. Damn. I got to get back. I told the story. Okay. Ian, Gary, and D-Rod. When I was in uh, 2007, I was in a training camp in Big Bear with uh, Quinton Rampage Jackson. There was Rampage fighting Dan Henderson. There was Czech Congo fighting Mirko Krokop. And I was fighting Matt Hamill. And there was it was a it was a super camp. We had so many people up there. Uh, Juanita Ibarra, Rampage's manager at the time, put on this camp in Big Bear, California. I'd never been there before. I flew out there. I was like, wow, this place is amazing. We had Brandon, The Truth Vera. We had so many talented fighters up there. And uh, I remember I walked in one day and there was this guy from Omaha, Nebraska, not Anthony Smith. And um, I walked in, it was this, this, this big dude that was helping sparring. And he goes, hey, man, Mike, those jeans are tight, bro. I was like, oh, really? You like those? Oh, thanks. He said, nah, those are tight. <laughs> like, oh. I, I thought he was like saying, oh, those are tight. They're nice jeans. But uh, it's called style, boys and girls. Yeah, right, we've got super chats, them? Brian. Read, read out the super chats. We got a bunch. Mikey, any chance to get the schmo on the show would be a great would be great to hear life as an MMA journalist as opposed to a fighter. Great product. Come on, Smith. Good, Chris good idea. Good idea. We will get the schmo. Continue. Uh, Joe Dylan Terrell, buzzing to see Anthony get the W tonight. Also wanted to say thanks for to all the BYM crew. For the weekly entertainment on the pod, much love from Cork Island. My grandfather is from Cork Island. So is mine. Beautiful place, beautiful place. Casey, is your grandfather from Cork Island as well? Yeah. We could very well be related. Your mic is super low, Harrington. Okay. Uh, Casey, shout out Casey, says, why do you think the UFC hasn't come to Wales yet? My fan, where? I do, why, uh, boy, yo, why the, the UFC hasn't come to Wales yet? Can't do as well. Shaq's a big stadium with a roof. It will be as big as the Audi Stadium show. Also, F. Harrington. Well, Casey, I'm going to tell you something now that's going to really annoy you. When I, I was offered the fight against Dan Henderson at UFC 204, my first title defense, Dana White called me up on the Monday morning after the fight, him and Lorenzo Fatita. And they said, We're thinking you versus Henderson. Where do you want to do it? Do you want to do it in Manchester or do you want to do it at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff? And I'm sorry, KC, I can't do a Welsh accent and I couldn't do the fight in Wales either because it's Manchester, baby. I had to go there. So it will happen eventually one day. What else we got, Bri? Sue Kimberly's just sending in two bucks for the fun of it. Appreciate you very much. AJ. Sue Kimbers. Thank you, is, Sue Kimbers. 
AJ, who's in the chat every episode without fail, asks, Brian, are we finally live? Yes, sir, we are actually <laughs> finally this live. This is it. This is it, because I see that all the time. People go, is this live? <laughs> this isn't live. It's like, bro, it's a pre-recorded podcast. We drop it at 9 p.m. Pacific every single time, and we love each and every single one of you. But this, this is live. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a running joke. We just... Uh, <laughs> I hit people with it occasionally in the chat as well. I just, <laughs> hey, are we live right now? What's, what's happening? Uh, J Jack family says, do you know my name yet? Anthony Smith shirt for merch. Good idea. Write it down, please. Add it to the list. We got these coming. Do you know my name yet? Uh, Peace Mode says, no man alive can beat my son. Yeah. No man alive. That's going to be another T-shirt. We're going to do a no man alive. We're probably going to have to get into some uh, litigious arguments with the with the family with the Fury family. No, over no, there. I'm sorry. The Jews <laughs> do not own the copyright. No man alive. That's okay? fair enough. If anyone, I own it. Okay, and you can fight me for it. I will Please. double leg Tyson Fury quicker than you can say. No man alive. Pick fair him enough. up, slam him on his head, and then drink my Sapporo. Walk out the ring and get hammered. No man yeah. alive. Irish Sam with the big 250. Love you, legends. Always supporting. You Shout do too to much, Irish my Sam. friend. I appreciate you. How many people in the chat, Bri? 2,600 people, Michael. 2,600 people. That's so That's many rising. people. That's a lot of people. You know, it's, it's, a re, it's, a, it's a very successful regional MMA show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Re, we're regional. Very successful. Like, yeah. yeah. 2,600? Like, Everybody's when I fought at Cage Rage, I don't know if there was 2,600 people there. The mind had been about that, so yeah. big up yourselves. Emad Gariba uh, sends in 250 just for funsies. Appreciate you very much. We like the funsies. Thank you. Uh, Nathan Short says, hey, guys, UFC back in Sydney at Kudos Arena in November. Will we see you all there? Probably not. Probably not from me as well. Uh, James Yadam says, hey, guys, kept the samurai sword and mounted it in the bedroom. Nice. Wife wasn't happy. Harrington a... looking like Alan from The Hangover. You do look a bit nice. like that. Here's Ian Gary making the walk real quick before the fight starts. Lucas's birthday tomorrow. Mother's Day tomorrow. My friend's oh, 50th shit. today. A lot of party activities. Um, Can... Lucas is 13 tomorrow. Okay. Oh. <sighs> I'll be I'll be I'll be honest. He's you know he's he's a, I, I don't want to say spoiled. But he's got everything you could possibly have. So he's like, what do we get him? And he wants a samurai sword for for his birthday. So I've bought him a katana, right? I bought him a katana. Rebecca is not happy because I just went ahead and ordered it when I was away in Tenerife. And she's <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like, I would have... In fact, my dad got me a samurai sword from like a second-hand shop when I was a kid. It wasn't sharp. You know what I mean? You couldn't cut anything on it. But what do we reckon to that? Is Rebecca right or am I... In the wrong. Oh, I'm seeing uh, Lucas Bisping in the chat says, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm so excited. I'm kidding. D don't <laughs> say that. Don't say that. Uh, we will do a Rebecca T-shirt, Frank Williamson. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold all comments on you getting the kid a samurai sword until, uh, until he has it for a month or so and we see how he treats it, you know? Well, the, see, see, the thing is that he's really, really – he started training at this place called The Den in Yorba Linda. And ever since he started training there, he's really loving martial arts training. And I bought him a couple of books, really, uh, recently. The Five Rings, a uh, book on uh, oh, samurai yeah, culture. That. And then The Art of War as well by Sun Tzu. Uh, so uh, – he, and he's loving those. And he, he's into Japanese culture. And he's like, Dad, I would love a samurai sword. So I got him a stand and a samurai sword. I better keep it down because he might be in the other room. There you go. Uh, I so I noticed that like the the one of the coolest things that uh, I've ever done as a result of working on this show, and I really appreciate this uh, to this day, is getting to go and check out Ruka, right? Like getting to to go into Very that cool. that training. So that was so cool. It was one of the coolest things I've ever done. Um, <sighs> inside there, there was like weapons training, and like the 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 I saw somebody who was doing it who was saying like, yeah, that is the natural progression, like. I'd like to learn a little bit of something with every martial art because I can. And it's like, oh, yeah, that sounds so cool. Yeah, yeah. So the guy that you're talking about there, and I mentioned the um, the uh, the Den Training Center, the head coach at the Den and the owner is a guy called Ben Jones who trained some UFC fighters, Curtis Millinder, amongst others. And he is a long, long time pupil of Eric Paulson. And Eric Paulson is who was in the gym doing the weapons training. And you're right, Harrington, because when I was there, I said to Eric Paulson, because obviously I'm not going to, 
fight anymore, but I'd still like to learn and extend my repertoire and, you know, whatever. And I thought doing a little bit of weapons training is fun and it get, keeps you active. And I'm like, you know, you're going to see me with the batons and the nunchucks and the fucking samurai swords. I'll be chopping heads off all over the place. And all right, first live resume. Oh, exactly. There we go. Lewis Wilkinson, first live chat for me, boys. Great to watch fights with you at a good time here in London. I know that is a great point as well. In the UK, it's not by design. But to be an MMA fan with the live fights, the pay-per-views, it's really hard, man. It's five, six o'clock in the morning, and it just yeah. destroys your Sunday. This is on at a good time. So shout out to everyone in the UK that's watching along live right now. We're about to get D-Rod and Alan, uh, Ian Gary Ooh. going live. I'm excited for this one. What's your pick, boys? I got Ian Gary. I like but Ian I Gary as well. I love, I love D-Rod, though. I do like D-Rod. I like his story. There, there's something about the massive age difference that that has me uh, leaning towards Gary, but um, yeah, I don't know, dude. D Rod nine and two. There, I my pick is Gary, uh, but I, I I would, it's I don't know. I see a world yeah, yeah. where I, Gary gets <laughs> clipped, though. You know. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's a definite po uh, possibility. D Rod hits hard. You know, I saw a picture this morning scrolling social media, having my coffee, and it was Ian Gary in 2014 with Conor McGregor. And then with Conor McGregor now, and he looks, I mean, no, he probably was about 12, but that was what, seven years, six, nine years ago. So he would have been Time flies, 16, dude. but he looked about 11. I tell you, he is a very confident man now. Ian Gary. Yeah, yeah very, absolutely. very confident man. Yeah. He is not afraid to take, to eat one to give one. No. And he's not afraid to talk a bit of crap either. He <laughs> stirs the pot. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, uh, I think you were saying earlier with the with the pizzas, man. He is uh, you know, mixing it up, uh, getting threatened, uh, mixing it up with a fan. Softball power shots look weird. Ooh, has the fight started for you, boys? Oh yes, yeah, sir. we're, we're three minutes and thirty five seconds. Oh my god, what's going on? Right, I'm forwarded. Jesus Christ. I'm on 321. Yep, Perfect. that's where I'm at. Jeez, this bloody feed is pissing me off. Right. Don't so I missed uh... the first two minutes. Ooh. You just missed Loaded a lot a of bit probing. There. Just a lot yeah, of getting... probing. Yeah, so nothing really has happened yet. Let's have a look. The, the problem is Gary is fast. He's sharp. He's got excellent straight shots. Gary's thrown two straight left so far. Neither of them hit, but they look fucking yeah. awful. That's a nice head kick, though. Just caught oh. him with the toes. Seems like D-Rod is a step or two behind. Oh, Ian Gary with the one-two. That left came overhead, came over the over the top there. What what time you got on the fights? Two minutes. Two thirty-five. Okay. Okay. Good. I think Gary gets caught. Okay. A lot of the time, kicks. though, D Rod is swinging at fresh air a little bit. Neither man landed particularly flush yet, though. But they're trying. They're both they... swinging. Shin, oh, oh, shin, baby. wild he head kick by Ian Gary. Shin. Done. He's hurt. This That's could a be rat. it. This There's... could be it. He's going to get up. Dino's going to get. He can't lie there. He's going to get back to his feet. The referee's going to stop it. Yeah, of course, and there he it does. is. Wow. That head kick was solid. I've. N That's one of the best head kicks I've seen connect. That was wild. I would have gone that far, but it was a beautiful. It was a beautiful. It was a beautiful yeah. head kick. Hey, first round stoppage against D Rod. I mean, come on, man. Take a bow. That was fantastic. Lived up to the hype. He's talked a lot of shit. You know, he's talked about how he's going to be great. And so far, so good. He's backed it up every single time. Well done, Ian Gary. That was sensational. And he's getting better as he goes, yeah. right? When he was settling for decisions, he's finding the knockouts now. He's probing his opponent. He 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 got D-Rod to get that, that, that hand drop low for that perfect play, perfect kick and, and jumping on with a real killer instinct now. Let's have a look. Let's have a look here at the replay. <sighs> Oh, man. Yep, that's shin on chin, but more shin on back of the head, really. Yeah, I just like bro. saying shin on chin because yeah. it rhymes. But when it wraps around the back of the head like this, look, oh, boom, when the foot goes around the back of the head, that means the shin is connecting on the neck and the chin a little bit and the jaw. Let's have another look here. And he's leaning Ooh. into it. 
Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So that was the, the neck, the all across the jaw. Beautiful shot. I'm Beautiful sure shot. Makes your body not want to do shit anymore. I mean, fair play. Fair yeah. play to him. Oh, man. That was oh. that was perfectly timed. I mean, I I, I don't know. I, I said it earlier. It felt like D-Rod was just a step behind. Anytime Gary went first, he was landing, and D-Rod was, like you said, swinging a fresh air coming back. Uh, anytime D-Rod led, I, I don't think much got home other than leg kicks. Yeah. All right, we've got, we've got some super chats here. We'll just do these while we have some commercial breaks from Frank Gunstein. says, when Anthony wins, is it all set for him to join the stream? Harrington, congrats on being a dad. Best thing in the world. Do you want her to do MMA? Uh, it's not set up for Anthony to do that. Um, did you send him a link, Brian? I believe I did. And uh, if I didn't, I'll throw one into his uh, email right now. What we'll do is what we'll do is we won't say Just shoot him a link right now. And then if he wins, we'll... Um, I'll shoot him a text to jump on, but obviously we'll wait and see what happens with Frankenstein. Um, Harrington doesn't even do MMA, so I don't think his kid's going to do that. I'm going to have my uh, baby girl learn jujitsu for sure. It's the best thing to do for a girl. they got to yeah. do jujitsu. 100%. Trashed mouth. Love the BYM crew. Keep it up. Let's go, Anthony. You're right. Would love to see Jason Herzog, Cutman Tate, or John Anik again on the podcast. Love you guys, F. Harrington. Yay, good, good, good shouts. You know, Jason Herzog is actually a very interesting guy to speak to. Um, I was locked in a sauna with him recently in Kansas City. Um, you know, we were talking about a lot of things. He's got an interesting story. Cutman Tate, that's on the cards because he's a he's solid dude. Love that guy. And he's a friend of Anthony Smith and John Anik. He is always welcome. Um, Bisping, thanks for the picture at UFC San Diego from Manny SoCal. Manny SoCal, thank you. Hey, well done to you, and Gary, man. That is really living up to everything that he said. You know, because when you go out there and you talk that much crap, you know, and you, and, and you, you big yourself up, which of course you're supposed to do, um, but then to back it up that way, it's pretty special, man. Well done. Yeah. Um, Let's have a listen. Hold on. Pulling it up. Let's see what he says. Seven wins. Yeah. But I, I think when you look at, and it's easy to say this now, of course, when you look at D-Rod, Andy and Gary, he is sharper. He is crisp. Crisper, pardon me. You know, D-Rod's a slugger. He's got some skills, of course, but he's not as sharp or as technical as Ian Gary. As I say, it's easy to say that now. But, uh, hey, solid win. Cameron Strid, Stridiron, thank you very much. Let's go, Anthony, indeed. Nathan Short, back in Sydney. No, we talked about that one before. Um, How many people on the chat, Bri? We got about 2,800 people watching right now. Ooh. We, we need 3,000. Okay. Oh, 2720 I have. Uh, We've just here. dropped 80. We've just dropped 80 like that. My God. <laughs> it's to do Guys and girls, go and tell all your friends to get uh, on this right now. Give Lucas a dirt bike, uh, says uh, Nomad 63rd. Yeah. The thing is, though, you've got to be like that kind of guy, haven't you? Do you know what I, mean? I know nothing about dirt bikes. I've never owned a motorbike in my life. Do you know what I mean? And it's like to do that, you got to like their families, aren't they? Your dad's into that stuff. So then the son gets into that stuff and all the rest of it. If you got a dirt bike, I wouldn't even know how to turn the bloody thing on. I'll tell you, <laughs> kickstart it or anything. I'm like, it'd be like, what do I do with this dad? Where do I ride it? So, oh, well, because normally the dad who's into it, they'd say, well, we go down the course every weekend and we go down the track and we do that. There ain't no tracks around here and I ain't going to them. Okay, I got lives to do. I got work to do. I got UFC to do. I've got families to raise, beers to drink. <laughs> you want a dirt bike? Wait until you're 21. Buy your own dirt bike. 21? You're not even going 18? 21. <laughs> All right. Uh, Bisping, would you ever spin the decks at UK festivals? Money to be made, says C. Johnston. C. Johnston, reach out to me. 100% I would. I would love to. You know, I have some friends in the DJ circuit and they're always trying to 
pull me back in. You know what I mean? One guy, Cheese, he's always going on at me, trying to get me to, to come and do it. And he's trying to get me to produce some music. I said to him yesterday, I was in the sauna. He's like, we've got some producers, mate. They want to work with you. They want to make some tunes. I'm like, bro, I'm 44, man. Do you know what I mean? Is that a bit cringe? I'm like, I'm 44. Let's be honest. I'm not having a midlife crisis here. How old is, uh, who's like a big DJ? I bet you there's oh, some 40-year-old DJs running around. There is, there is. There's some, but they've done it since they were 20. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. now they're legends in the game. You know what I mean? Like the Rolling Stones of DJs? Yeah, there you go. Will DC ever find a suit that fits? That's offensive, Anthony Evans. <laughs> that is offensive. <laughs> oh, man. I can't see Ant's balls, but Ant rules. <laughs> Shout out to L Bond. For the, the super chat, cheese versus Blanky. There you go. Let's go, Blanky. Uh, El Bond just sending in five bucks because because you know we're awesome. I appreciate you. Uh Stephen Moffat says, Brian and Harrington, what would your fighter nickname be? Brian? Uh paid. Uh Brian gonna... Maleficent McKay. Sure. Ooh. I like that. That's a lot of words. Mike hard as nails Harrington. I'm gonna go there hamburger. Go. Hamburger Harrington. Hell hamburger yeah, dude. Harrington? That's a fun fighter name. I want a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten anything. What time is it? It's 20 past one in the afternoon. I'm starving. I've eaten three cookies today. Lunch Rebecca! So nice. <laughs> I'm, 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 I might do a DoorDash. Mm. You know what? I might do the same thing. I'm doing a DoorDash, Chick-fil-A. All right. You uh, want to have a race? See who gets here first? Oh, mine will get here first. Always. Mm. The Chick Fil A is quick at my house. <laughs> Casey asks, "Why do you think the UFC hasn't come to Wales yet? Big stadium with a roof. It'll be as big as the Aussie Stadium show." Also, Brian, F. Brian, keep up, bro, keep up. I went oh, we did that one? about this. We did this. We talked about it. Hardcore, we... in-depth analysis. I told the story about being offered a fight in Wales and all the rest of it. Boy, you're doing it in a fun way. This well, thing went, is Harrington, the is the UFC coming to the UK? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm blaming I'm blaming Harry. I'm sorry to Wales. Rid of that one. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Uh, oh, is it Anthony Smith now? No. We got one more and uh, one more and then Anthony. Oh Smith, yeah. I no, 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 no. It's Anthony Smith and Johnny Walker right now. That's no, the no, next no, fight. No, no. Yeah, it is. Four thirty. Wow. Oh jeez. Oh shit. All right. Oh. No, 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 none of your bullshit talk now, boys. Uh, let me just do my Chick Fil A order though. <laughs> what do we think? And put a poll up on this. What do we think about Johnny Walker's hairdo yesterday? The perm, the mega perm on top of the tall body. What do we uh, think about that? I don't. I'm nervous by. The, someone says I'm getting nervous by the second. Yeah, me too, Jimmy. Yeah, I was I was enjoying it a lot more when we were reading chats and just goofing off. Now I'm getting. Yeah, I I got butterflies in my stomach. What? Absolutely. Ah. Uh, Mike, what does this ever take you back to like sitting backstage before you were going to make the walk? Like, is there ever a time you can tap into that? Yeah, I mean, every single time I talked about this on the last show, even when Bruce Buffer, when it was Aljamain Sterling and Henry Cejudo, you know, at that time, when because Bruce does such a fantastic job of revving everybody up, um, you know, I'm like, oh, it always gets you going. Always gets you going. Hold on, where's the bloody Coke Zero? Where is the Coke Zero? Where's the Coke Zero? <laughs> I don't see the Coke Zero. It's Anthony Smith's fight. You like Coke Zero more than like regular Coke? Buddy, Anthony Smith's about the fight. Um, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker is scary. Like a lot of people I, I saw in the comments for this week's episode were saying Johnny Walker is terrifying whether you're rooting for him or you're rooting for his opponent because you never, you just never know what's going to happen with this guy. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Uh... Anyway, shut up. Shut up. No more comment talk. Okay, we're gonna go back to the comments after the fight, right? We're not here, we're here to watch Anthony Smith and we're here to talk about his fight, not going off on tangents about you know whatever the hell you were just talking about. I was talking okay. about how scary Johnny Walker is. I was ordering I was ordering Chick-fil-A. <laughs> 30, oh shit. I'm 200. like, shut up. I'm getting nervous now as well. There's 3,228 people watching us get nervous over here. How many? 30. 200 3220 3292 awesome. oh shout out every single one of you and we're all here for anthony smith this is it now this is the big moment you know anthony um he sacrifices a lot 
You know what I mean? Getting yeah. ready for a fight of this magnitude is very, very hard. I always say it physically and mentally. Probably 50-50 in terms of what that toll is on your body and on your mind. He's been driving out to Colorado every week. He's still been doing this podcast pretty much religiously twice a week. You know, maybe miss the odd one here and there because he's getting ready for a fight. And Anthony, <clears throat> I think this is 51 professional fights now. That's so and he still fights. very, very much wants to be champion of the world. So this is an important fight. Now, make no mistake, if he doesn't get the job done here, it's not the end of the road. Do you know what I mean? But he will be, he will be very disappointed in himself. But I always think back to when I fought Luke Rockhold the first time in Sydney, Australia. I remember I did the press conference and then I spoke to a journalist in the US and he said, this is it, right, Mike? He said, if you lose this fight, you're never going to sniff a world title ever again. And I said, no, no, not at all. I said, if I lose this, yeah, I'll be disappointed. But it isn't the end of the road and I ain't going to give up and I ain't going to quit. You know, and as long as there's still a bloody breath in my body, I'm still going to be trying. And I know that Anthony Smith is cut from that exact same cloth. However, if he gets the job done here in style against Johnny Walker or even just a win, then he's right back in the conversation. So this is this is a very, very important fight for Anthony in terms of his legacy, his trajectory, and of course, you know, just winning the fight. That's the main thing as well, you know, for in terms of pride as a man and the amount of money that you earn. I got butterflies right now. I don't even know what to say. Uh, relating to, well, yeah, I don't want to look ahead of this one while it's still coming. Uh, Jessica Colindres, you're absolutely right. Quitters do never win. That's right. Johnny Walker going to break into his house. Well, if Johnny Walker break, if, if, if the fight goes the same way as the guy that broke into Anthony Smith's house, Johnny Walker is about to get his He's shit in pushed trouble. in. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you could say. You ever had your shit pushed in? <laughs> you know, people talk about. I've seen the uh, occasional smart ass comment where it's like, "Oh, Anthony couldn't even knock out a crackhead." Did you see that fucking dude? <laughs> Anthony beat the brakes off of that guy. I it, did not see him, and who it, cares? We're talking about Johnny Walker. Uh, no, I, I don't. I, I didn't see it. Oh, yeah. Says, what did I say wrong? Mr. Goldman at 706. I don't know. Is that Soul Bay watching along? I think that's uh, directed at you, Brian. Brian, give us one of them. <laughs> give us one of them, Brian. Come I on. Got, I don't have salt. You do look a little salt out. bay -ish. I'll hurt you. With, with, okay. oh. oh, this is Rosenstroke. You know, Rosenstroke versus Almeida, just to talk about the main event for a second. You know, I like Rosenstroke a lot. We said this on the show, you know, but he is a kickboxer. And Jalton Almeida, that man can wrestle like crazy. Stylistically, it's a really tough matchup for Biggie Boy. It really is. But he's got that kind of crazy power where one shot, and we always say it, but, you know, heavyweights, he really can, though. That's how hard he hits. Due to Osora, 2 a.m. here in Anthony, waiting for Anthony. Gonna get the job done here. Love the pod. Thank you for the entertainment. Thank you, Duto. Uh, <laughs> I'm hearing uh, something. You are moving to LA. Do it. Much love, you and the crew. Episode you one. You can say the word here. Chinese. It's Chinese whispers. It's, you uh, can say what that. Got, well, what's wrong with that? It's, it, it's you know you guys call it telephone where you whisper oh. something to someone and they whisper. In the UK, we call that Chinese whispers. Harrington made it weird. I you don't know weird. how YouTube works, man. <laughs> how much harder is it to um, watch a friend fight? Uh, Jordan Shepard wants to know. Say that one more time, Bry. How much harder it is? How much harder is it to watch a friend fight? It's pretty nerve wracking. I will say that. I but that's that's what we talked about last week. You know, yeah. watching fights, you're always on the edge of your seat when it's someone that you're a fan of or someone it's career that you followed. But then when you know somebody personally, it's heightened to a whole nother level. And then obviously we work with Anthony in and out. I'm proud to call him a very, very good friend at this point. I have so much respect for the man, you know, on many, many levels. So yeah, it's bloody hard. Uh, David F says, Anthony wins. We're all taking a shot. I don't know if I have any alcohol in the house. 
I'm just yeah. I'll they, go find some. <laughs> well, Harrington's gonna break. If Anthony wins, we should take one chip. <laughs> yeah, damn, Brian, you have them right. I do have. Them. No, no, no. We're not doing that now. We're doing. <laughs> we're doing that with Anthony when he wins. Yeah. Oh, that's a fun celebration. Yeah, Harrington, <laughs> break sobriety. There's tequila in the fridge over there. There is tequila in the fridge. Is this it? <laughs> do I finally abandon my kid tonight? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm just listening to the promo right here. Johnny Walker is a freak athlete. He is. a freak hairdo. I, but you know what? Size and athleticism is not enough to get it done at this level right. of the game. Now, he has been working with um, John Kavanaugh, rounding out his skill set, working on the mind side of things. But Anthony, with 51 fights, I mean, the, the, his mind is as good as anyone's. You've heard how great he is at analysis when it comes to mixed martial arts. He understands the sport at an extremely high level. He's got a sensational team around him. His coach, Mark Montoya, is a fantastic coach as well. Eyeball ball shots. If, if Anthony wins, I'll do that. C. Johnson. Eyeball ball. Mike and per uh, Kevin and Perry. Go large. UK reference there. You guys won't get that. I was so way over my head. I was like, what happened? Did I just have a stroke? I didn't understand. I was just wondering if I just was not getting words Eyeball in the ball? right order. All I want to do is do it. It's never mind. It's, it's a film in England. Eyeball yeah. Paul. Hell yeah. Is it, was it, it go? <laughs> no, so there's a DJ called Tall Paul, but in this oh. movie, which was centered around like uh, raving in Ibiza with uh, oh, Harry funny. Enfield and his comedy partner, they did a movie pretending to be two young ravers. And one of the DJs was Eyeball Paul, and he would do a shot through his eyeball. <laughs> that's how he drank his shots. <laughs> Damn, dude, that sounds dope. Um, it's 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 stupid, but it's funny. <laughs> What's the excuse for not supporting Anthony today? Absolutely no excuse for not supporting Anthony today, Robert Ronell. Who's not uh, supporting Anthony today? How many people we got in the chat, Bry? Uh, Three thousand eight hundred and thirty-one people are watching. Let's go, fellas! Thank you for the support on this. More importantly, thank you for the support for Anthony Smith. I think this is. Uh, it, it, I think he'll be really warmed by this. Do you know what I mean? Because this is a, it's a big showing for everyone coming out here and supporting him through his fight. Obviously, you've all got it on on your TVs or wherever you are in the world and whatever you're doing and you're listening to us as well as part of the BYM community. And it's a wonderful thing, I think, that we've all built here. And, you know, okay, there's a few haters in the comment section these days, but that's to be expected <coughs> as any show grows. But all in all, we've got a very, very great community here. So thank you all for being here, every single one of you. So rare. <laughs> that you can do this uh fight prediction uh we're saying round method um tko decision submission what are you thinking mike yeah well Lewis it's anthony smith it's anthony smith for sure i think the smart thing to do for anthony would be here he is making the walk oh no it's johnny walker sorry the smart thing would to, to be would to be i'd play it safe to start the fight when i say play it safe i don't mean run away but i mean i, I would i would Look for Johnny to try and expose himself. Look for him to be the aggressor and try and just like download information, try and see the type of attacks that he's going to use. He's got three rounds. There's no need to rush it. There's no need to try and go on out for a quick first round stoppage. My guess is a second round submission for Anthony Smith. Okay. I feel Brian. like Anthony knows what he's talking about when he predicts these things. And uh, Mike also has been pretty on point statistically for his predictions as well so i'm gonna say second round submission for anthony smith i like a first round knockout i i, hey, I, I hope it's a first round knockout okay, i hope okay. this is the only time harrington that i hope that you are right and i am wrong <laughs> even though and you can all kiss my ass the fight with rockhold and mike perry did not go down at 175 pounds upon you're me right now yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. That is a that is a thousand percent. You are correct. I listen. I knew it was one hundred eighty five pounds, but on their stupid BKFC website, it said one hundred seventy five, and I trusted that David Feldman more than my own heart and Michael Bisping. Yeah. And for that, 
I apologize, sir. I was just like, there's no way Rocco's getting down to 170, 175, whatever no. it was. Anyway, 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 back to this. Johnny Walker's let's, about to get in the cage. Yeah, let's have a listen. Let's have a watch. He's looking calm, cool, and collected walking out. I feel like Anthony Smith is going to make it. Like I, I like your prediction on the second round because I feel like Anthony Smith is going to make it rough for Johnny Walker in that first round. He's not going to be this cocky when he goes to the stool. I'm telling you. Well, no, the, the thing is with Johnny Walker, this is what you always see from him. He's, right. he's always like this. He's always got... With respect, because I like Johnny. I've met him a few times. He's a nice guy. I like him. Um, he's always got that kind of goofy expression on his face. Like, he's not taking it too seriously. But, of course, he takes this seriously. You don't get to this level unless you're putting the, the work and the hours in. You know? But then he has that mental switch when it starts. So, here we go. Return of the Mac. The blackout treatment. Let's listen. Let's listen. Turn it up, boys. <laughs> Oh, I don't hear return of the mic. I don't either. I don't hear. I don't hear anything. I don't I have sound off. I hear some chanting or like some. Tell me he's coming out to like God save the queen. <laughs> Wait, why do they have these? Has he like changed the... his music? I think so. Oh, maybe it's. Oh, no, no it's the intro to it. Here we go. Hey, Anthony, taking that wall. There it is. Come on. That's a nice sign. It always starts like that. He's got a smile on his face. Hey, and listen, what he's doing there. Oh, I miss it, man. Look at the smile. That's what you got to do. You got to enjoy these moments. That's you got to awesome, try dude. and remember them because the time it comes where. You don't do it anymore. But look at this. He's milking the moment. He's been the superstar Hell that he yeah, is. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Ooh. Guys. Damn, damn putting his hat on a little... Woo! Putting Woo! his hat on a little kid like Brett the Hitman Hart. Yeah, Give dude. He was a Rick Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! This big backside is flapping at the moment. It is. Taking some deep breaths there. Yeah, dude. There he is. Lionheart by Hunter. With his family. Gray. This beautiful moment. Oh, bless. Look at this. Oh. That's always it's that's always hard. It's always an emotional moment. I used to go and find Rebecca every single time. If the kids were there, of course, as well. Oh man! Yeah. Oh man! I am nervous. Walking out like a boss, you are absolutely right, Mister Slamo. You think we're more nervous than Anthony right now? You know, this is one of the most nerve-wracking moments as a fighter when you walk out because yeah. you're about to step in the ring. It's about to become real. You're walking out. You've got the crowd. Of course, you're a little bit nervous. You're backstage. The nerves start to build as it gets closer and closer. Then you walk out. He shared a smile. Now he's talking to Mark Montoya, his longtime coach and mentor, giving him some final words of inspiration. And now it's like, now you've got to fucking turn it on. And then you walk in there. Once the fight starts, that anxiety, that nervousness, that that, that apprehension and the butterflies is gone. Well, you don't thanks. have time for that. You're in thanks. the moment. You're in the fight. Thanks. Oh, Jamal's so, talking to him. That's Jamal, right? Yeah. It sounds like he's oh, hyping man. him up. Yeah, 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 that rocks, dude. Th thanks to all 4,600 people in the chat right now Woo! watching us watch Anthony Smith bring <laughs> home a dub for BYM. Thank you, every single one of you. That's amazing. Return of the mat. What a tune. There he is, saluting the crowd, milking the moment like the superstar that he is. And he officially Ooh, my yard. in the octagon. Oh, Let's man. go, Smith. Come Let's on. Let's fucking go. I feel like the jersey, the the last name across the back, like a like a sports jersey, is the that's peak MMA. I love that right. so much. 34, 31, two inch. You know, it's crazy inch. that Anthony's still only 34 years old. You know, 51 professional fights. I mean, it's insane. I am older than Anthony, and I oh. always think about how uh 
you know, I've wasted, I've wasted a lot of time. <laughs> how, how old are you, Brian? I'm 35. 35. What about you, Hamilton? Just turned 35 on uh, a couple weeks ago. Are oh, you bastards? <laughs> old man. 40 bloody four up in this piece. That's these guys are nervous. Yeah, we are. We are nervous. I'm always nervous when it's someone I know, but when it's Anthony now, I'm more nervous than ever. I feel like it's a member of family in there. So they oh. uh, they have Anthony listed. They have this fight listed as a pick I'm looking on uh, across a number of different sites right now. He is a slight, like a slight underdog. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's just don't put that. So Johnny Walker on. here. I'm not. He's he's looking very focused. He's looking big. He's looking ready. Looking in shape. All right, let's have a look at Anthony now. Let's have a look at the body language. There he is. He looks intense. Strolling it out, shaking the head. Man. I feel like... Come on. No, he's ready. He's focused. He's oh, focused. yeah, absolutely. He's ready to do some fucking damage. You know what I mean? Never mind. Listen, you can look at someone like Johnny Walker and give it a smile and all the rest of it, posturing, putting on a show to the people, saying, look at me, look how ready I am, look how calm I am. Never mind that stuff. You're getting yourself into the mindset to go out there and crush another human being physically. You know what I mean? So fuck the crowd. Fuck the uh, tr trying to look like you don't care and all the rest of it. You're about to go to war. You're about to try and smash each other's faces in. Let's be honest. This is a vicious brutal sport and here we go round one is on oh, the god damn way come on no mess ups Keith Peterson right all right I got 456 so he's expecting yeah he's expecting uh, some low kicks I reckon by the way he was leading that left yeah. leg Feeling out. Yeah, he's definitely expecting those low kicks. You see the way he's leading, lifting that lead leg. It's not necessarily a Muay Thai stance, but he's expecting to have to check some low kicks, I believe. Well, and yeah, that's the first one. So this is the. There's a nice right hand. Oh, another one. So Johnny Walker knows he's coming off the ankle injury. As you, as a fighter, are you targeting that early? Not necessarily. It's been a long time. The man's recovered, but um, what's your time? Yeah, yeah. The, Anthony's fights on, babe. Do you want to come and sit and watch? Okay, I'll, I'll get that in a minute, babe. The Chick Fil A just turned up. I'm oh, at four you need everybody. Yeah, me too. Yeah, okay. I'm on three fifty six. Okay, That's... cool. Yeah, that right hand was nice. It was a nice and long right hand. A lot. There it is again. He's like yeah. finding the mark with that right oh, hand yeah. hasn't he's... landed particularly flush. It hasn't landed, you know, with significant power, but it has landed, and it, it's, it's he's found the opening and found the timing. He's also getting Johnny to move straight back, so I feel like he can set something up off that. Yeah, if, if you can force him to go straight back on the back of a right hand, you can run him into the fence and hit a double leg takedown, join the hands, pick him up. But right now. He's been very, they're both being tentative. Nice front kick attempt from Johnny Walker. Missed Head that. kick attempt blocked. There it is. Pivots out nice. And good footwork Missed from the, the flying, flying knee. knee. Thank God. Oh! Missed that. Oh, 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 big right hand. Oh, oh, Heavy big low kick though from Walker. He's attacking that ankle. It's, uh, it's, 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 Anthony's doing well. Yeah. It's a good fight. Anthony's like landed the quick, biggest though. shot of this round easily. It looked like he got hit. Still got three minutes. Big Still miss early from days. Walker. You see, J Johnny's loading up with that right hand there, that overhand right, telegraphing it a little bit. So far, all the big shots, Anthony's moved out the way. He's seen them coming. Those low kicks are starting to add up, though. He is definitely attacking that lead leg of Anthony Smith. I mean, it, we're talking about a six-inch reach advantage, and Anthony is getting home with his jab every time. Yeah. It's He's crazy. now to use a reach advantage. There's a nice little combo though for Johnny. Landed a couple there. Okay. It's those flying knees he's got to be careful of because he is tall and he's so explosive. Two hard low kicks for Walker. Anthony's taking them no problem now. He's not switching stances. He's not cowering away from them. Ooh, big right. Ooh. There it is. That's a good shot. Yeah, Anthony that kick to the, the body. Right hand. The right hand is nice for Anthony. I'd like to see him follow it up with something. A left hook behind it. Even a double leg. 
But he's got to be watch those knees up the middle. The knees up the middle of Johnny Walker are very dangerous. Seems low like blow. Walker got him low. Just a little tippy tap. Time for war. You're right, Charles. Can we get a toothless Tony? Monocle Mikey? Yeah. Oh, man. He just blocked that one. Let's fudge and go. You're right, Ivan Bunsick. So a little, little nut shot. He's fine. You know, sometimes in these situations, it's good. You can just like decompress everything and can reassess things. Oh, it looks like it might have hurt him a little bit, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. the little tippy tappers do a lot of damage, you know? Oh, you know, it's weird because sometimes it can be a really, really hard shot and not hurt at all. Obviously, yeah. you have the cup on and that does the job. And then sometimes just a little bit of the toe can hit a certain way, knock the cup to the side, just, you know, connect with the balls. Testicle sometimes the power of it, it, yeah, yeah, the the physics of testicles. <laughs> yeah. Testes physics are weird. Anthony looks like he is going to make him pay for that. <laughs> I hope so. All right. I don't like the way, uh, if I'm honest, the, oh, hook kick attempt. The, I don't like the way Anthony's raising. Oh! Got dropped there, but he's, no, he's still in it. He's no. trying to get the takedown. Don't do that. What Paul Craig did to Uncle. He's trying to get the takedown there. He's got it. He needs to drive. Oh. Let go of the leg, Anthony. Get oh, he's down, got it. Anthony. Drive it through. Yes. yes. Gets top position. Nice, well done, nice, 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 nice. Nice work. Now, oh! 15 left. He took some heavy shots there, though. That was risky. It was kind yes. of like he, it was Paul Craig against uh, Johnny Walker, the exact right. same scenario. Yeah. But he followed it through. Now he's got top position. He's established a heavy half guard. See the downward pressure. He's putting that shoulder pressure into the neck. The guard is wide open for Johnny Walker. And Anthony, right now, the clock is ticking away. He's got 50 seconds. So... It's going to be hard to get a submission, but he needs to do some damage and make this position count. Yeah, I mean, honestly, just get him into side control and recover. Like, what? I, no, just he's got the clock is ticking those away. Elbows. The guard's drop, wide open, drop right those elbows, elbows posture up, heavy elbows down. Yeah, I mean, it, it, oh, it's right there. I think he is. Is he trying for a triangle? No, he's not trying for a triangle. What on earth are you watching, Harrington? No, I, I, I <laughs> was black belt jujitsu skills are paying off again, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's in half guard on top, trying to land elbows. Walker's working up. Good job by Johnny. Careful with that throw, Anthony. You might end up on your back. Shit. Exactly. Round's over. Went for it at the end of the round. Oof. All right, that's the round Johnny Walker's most dangerous. And in. put a poll up. And put a poll up. Who won oh. that round? Just missed with the right hand, got clipped oh, with the no. left hook. He got a little over aggressive there, but I respect it. He's trying to get it going. That's that was a tough one right there. Right. Let us know in the poll, please, who won round one. The poll is up. Walker, Anthony, or a draw. Johnny taking some deep breaths there. Real deep. Yep. Close He's not round. used to getting sat on either, you know. Close like I'm sure round. in the gym, nobody sits on top of Johnny Walker like that. I mean, Anthony won four minutes and 30 seconds of that round. Well, according to the polls, with 979 votes, 76% of people are saying that Johnny Walker won it. Yeah. I mean, he got the knockdown. That's typically yeah. what steals around. Yeah. <sighs> but that, if, 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 if the polls are correct, round. he's got two rounds. What's going on here? Should, oh, Shaley Lip. Lip. Shaley, who's oh of Shaley Lip, of course. Yeah, rest right. in peace. Talked about it on him. Thursday. My God, I know, so sad. Uh, did Johnny Walker, he let him creep. He let him creep. All right, all right, all right. Come quiet. on, shut up, Harrington. <laughs> no, man. Fuck. We are at four minutes and forty-five yeah. seconds right now. Yeah, I think I'm maybe a second ahead of you. So, I, I mean, that, that was a good approach from Anthony. He knows now we can take him down. He's got to be a little bit careful. He got he got a bit reckless the way oh! he rushed in. Oh, good right hand. Nice counter. Okay. Yeah, Kavanaugh's calling for the leg kicks. 
I want to see Anthony me. attack that front leg. Yeah, same. He's standing so heavy on it. Yeah. I was just saying a second ago, I like the approach of what he did in round one. Walker rolls with the right hand from Smith there. I like what he did. He was trying to force the takedown with a combination. I'd like to see him do that again, but not be quite as reckless because he did get clips going in. Well, if Corral said- him up against the fence, get him a little bit closer to the fence before he, he shoots. The range is it the range is tough. Of course. He's a big man. I feel like every time he throws that right, Walker goes straight like the he throws a straight right, Walker goes straight back. If he could just build on Ooh. his combination from there. Front kick to the midsection by Johnny Walker. Anthony's he's firing Ooh. right back. He's going forward. Little nice left hook kind of lands. A little check hook. That was Ooh. nice. Nice little right hand. Right hand again. Uh, he's finding the moment with that right hand over and over. It's almost like he can't miss when he throws it until he lands. A few more nice low kick. Would, would be nice. Yeah, nice low kick. A few more feints would be nice. Walker returns the favor. Ooh, nice kick to the midsection. More of that. Please keep beating up Johnny Walker's body. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Walker's a problem if you beat up his body, dude. He's <sighs> it's very okay. tense. And to see, he was trying to oh. initiate Ooh. a takedown. See, okay. Johnny walked away. Walker checks that one. Two heavy returns from Johnny Walker to the low kicks. Anthony firing back with a low kick. Yeah, yeah. Trading low kicks here for the most part. The oh, right hand has been a good weapon so far right? for Anthony. There it is. There it is. That's backed him up. Do that again. Back Walker up again. And that's when he needs to shoot. Or could... Anthony has a massive advantage on the ground if he can get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh, he's going to move. Nice left hook return, though, by Anthony. There's a good right hand. He's going to follow it up, though. He's going to go again. He's going to watch out for the, the weirdness from Walker. The, oh, nice. Okay. He said it. Nice low kick from Johnny. I like that, though. That, like, that presence of mind, Anthony being like, yeah, nice low kick. Like, he's at least checked in enough with, like, I don't know what's going on in the world, you know? Oh well, yeah. You're aware of it. You're in there. You felt it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Come on, Anthony. I'd like to see some double jab, right hands, double jab, right hands, level changes, a little bit more activity. Of course, it's dangerous when you're trying to enter. It's easy for me sitting there saying that oh. I haven't got Johnny Walker firing back. Yeah. They're, they just 22 uh, leg kicks already trading low kicks. Yeah. But it's 22 to five. So they're not trading. Fair. Oof, nice left, left hand. Body kick by Nice Anthony. kick to the body. Fucking okay. weird capoeira kick. Yeah, that did nothing, though. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But the judges see it, though, which is, a, which is a concern. Yeah, right. Who knows? I mean, these judges could either look at that and be like, yeah, that was in a dumb. Uh, or <laughs> it was. <laughs> to be like, okay, yeah, that looked cool. We'll oh, they're talking. No, no, no. Oh, man, it, what are they it, saying? They're not saying it looked dumb. Oh. Um, they're talking here. They're, they're yeah. Anthony Anthony's baiting something. him. Anthony's baiting him. Up to plus 15 seconds. 25. He's going to try and steal this round here with something big. Yeah, they're talking about something. Oh, those leg kicks from Johnny Walker. Yeah. They're a son of a bitch. Oh, that right. Oof. He's dra- He's bringing yeah. him in now. Ah. All right. I, I will. I we will ask him when he uh, when when he shows up later what he was saying to him in the cage in round two for sure. We got a we got a couple of a uh, couple of super chats to break the yeah. tension here. Uh, throw them at us. Throw them at us. All right. Uh, Quinn Forty says first time watching a live. Looking good, boys. Bam. Thank you very we, much, buddy. What else? Uh, Jade Green says we need a Rebecca T-shirt. We got Duda Sora with a. Will Anthony really be joining after his win over Walker? Love from Northeast India. Northeast yes. India in the house. I mean, listen, if Anthony gets a great win, then um, 
If he feels like who, who knows? Who knows? Fingers crossed. He said he would, but we'll see. We'll see how he feels. It all depends. Yeah. It's all well and good sitting on a podcast <laughs> and saying you'll do it when you've just been through a fifteen-minute war and your head's rattled and your body's sore. Maybe you don't feel like it, you know. So, so that remains to be seen. How many's in the chat, Bry? Uh, uh, we got five thousand two hundred and twenty-five people watching right now. Sorry, how many? Five thousand two hundred and twenty-five. Nice. Shout out to all of you. All right, round three. Anthony needs a big third round here. I'm Both seeing, rounds have been close. Yeah, I'm seeing a bunch of people in the chat. 10-9, 10-9 for, for Anthony with that last round. I think I it's 1-1. So. One, one. It's, it's, it's very likely could be 1-1. One and one. Who knows? Could be two been close rounds. Yeah. The leg kicks are piling up, though. That I, I, yeah. I, I don't like that. Okay, but now, okay. Oh, uh, that's nice. That's nice. He has to be careful of that. Yeah, yeah he is going to be careful rushing in, in like that, although that would be the key to success as well. He's going to back him up. Ooh. Shoot a double against down. the fence. Ooh, Walker nice does a really kick. good job of rolling and covering those right hands with the shoulder. He's very, very good yeah. at that. Yeah, but then also, wouldn't it like, isn't that where you're supposed to move in, or uh, is that how he's landing? No, he's, 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 he's defending the shot. Right. Anthony, another overhand, right? Come on, Anthony. Oof. There's, there's nothing much. Did he get eye poked? From... Did he get eye poked? I don't know. Yeah, ref stepped in. Oh, for flip's sake, that's all we need. Yeah. The ref said definitely got an eye poke. You wear Keith Peterson there saying, yeah, yeah, he's definitely got it. Oh, yeah, look at him. Let's oh. Have a look. oh, man, yeah, that was a bad one. He didn't even want to do it. Oh. Take your time, Anthony. you got five minutes here. Take it all. Paul Fontaine. Take the whole of the five. All right, he's right back in now. Three minutes, 50 left. Oof. Anthony got out of the way of that. That was pretty good. Anthony looking mad like he just wants to stalk him down and get a finish yeah. here. Ooh, like that leg kick? Check yeah. that one. Oh. Come on, Anthony. This is your round. You're right, though. Like, he does just roll with those. Yeah, he, he's, do, he's doing it very, there. very well, very effectively, which is annoying as fuck. <laughs> oh, get the okay. Out of here. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's it, Anthony. Let it go. A little bit now and shoot a takedown. Ground and pound finish. Come on, bud. Yeah, get this takedown. Some heavy, heavy breathing from both men. Ah, those low kicks are a son of a bitch. Yeah. And again, he's he's throwing a lot of those low kicks. Yeah, but um... And again, and again, it's okay. It's not going to end the fight. We've got two minutes 30 left. But the problem is they do rack up points with the judges in the judge's mind. Can he push for a takedown right now with the amount of damage he's taken on his on his leg? Like, does that yeah, typically... So. I mean, we okay. did just see him switch stances there for a second. So he's definitely feeling them, of course. And it's a smart, you know, smart idea, strategy from Johnny Walker because obviously of the recent leg break, you know? Mm. Come on, Anthony. Let's go. Come on, Ant. Nice left hand. Just misses with the left hook. A little bit out of range. And Anthony Front kick from Anthony. Good. Ooh, takes it like Oh, him. there it is. There it is. He's got in on... Ah, Smith. He had the single for a second. Oh! Body head. What? Oh, what oh you don't do that, Anthony. He's trying to go for an ankle pick. Get up. Get up. Don't do this. Don't play this game. Hope you get out, Tilly. Come on, don't do this. Don't stand Come on, dude. Up. You gotta get up. He doesn't have a leg. Stand up. He doesn't have a leg. Don't do oh, he's got it. Oh. oh, shit. Get up, Anthony. I don't think he's got a leg, man. Well, stop saying that. He's got two legs there right now. Oh, Johnny Walker offering him up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Come on, Anthony. Ah, oh, this has been a bloody. That's not a good visual for the judges. No. 
He's chopping away at that leg, though. Come on, he's coming he in. A head kick, but a nice attempt from Walker. Right hand just kind of glances. Some nice shots from Walker there. Anthony's switching stances. Clearly, that leg's troubling him. And I'm, I'm not surprised the amount of shots that he's taking on it. Walker's collared him on. Final 40 seconds. Ah, you see him wince when he took that low kick there. Yeah. Come on, Anthony. Pull it out the nice back. Right hand. 20 seconds. Let's go, buddy. Come on. You got this, bud. No. You can do it. Let's have a final attack. Yeah, put everything you got out there. Oh, nah, man. He's, he's tired. He's very yeah, he's tired. He's very tired. Ah, oh, the knee. Come on, Anthony. Ah, oh, stand up straight. Get those hands up. Oh, man. The leg kicks really did him in. The leg kicks were definitely a big, big factor. Big factor there. Oh, man. I've got a horrible feeling. I don't even want to say it. Same. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see what the what the uh, the judges thought about Two all that. We have a uh, we have a couple more uh, super chats. If you want to take those while we're waiting, yeah, go on real quick. Uh, well, we have some people that were rooting on Anthony before the fight. We have a. Uh, <sighs> Nice and fast, Brian, if you can, buddy. Lost three stone, thanks to you, Mike. Loving the pod, bam. Uh, Thank you, sir. Appreciate it much. Ethan Brandon says, Matt, Mike, did you ever get Matt Hamill his sandwich? I don't know what that means. No, I I'll buy him a sandwich, though. I owe him a sandwich. We talk a little bit on Twitter on DMs here and there. Go on. Madison Stevens says, love you, boys. I watch every episode of BYM. Bam. Thank you, brother. We appreciate you very, very much. Steve Ruskin says a pound for each of you. Three sending three pounds over. Thank you very much, sir. Cheers, mate. Gabriel Shapiro Walker. says, "What's up, baby boys? Appreciate that." All right, here we go. So we're back here. Um, we're back here. So Walker Anthony started off well. He was landing a lot of good right hands. Sadly, Walker was doing a very good job of rolling with those punches. He was rolling with them and using the shoulder to kind of deflect the shot. Um, it, it's not easy to do that either. So you got to give credit to Johnny Walker there. The leg kicks were definitely a factor towards the end. The third round, Anthony looked like he was hurt as well. So it's not a good visual for the judges there. Uh, if it was 1-1 one, one going into the third, I, I, I can't lie. I can't say. I think Walker got the third. I mean, I don't think he did. Walker got the third. So if it's 1-1 one, one going into the third, then I guess it's 2-1. But you never know. Fingers crossed. Let's go. Let's have a listen. It's not 30-27. Oh, what a dickhead Johnny Walker is. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's the sport, guys. You can't win them all. That's the, that's the hey, listen, that's the sport. You gotta say well done to Johnny Walker. He fought Absolutely. a good fight. You know, obviously we're all devastated for Anthony. Devastated, you know. Yes. But you know, listen, you, you, two men step in there, two world class fighters. That's the way it goes, you know what I mean? So you got you gotta you gotta say well done to Johnny Walker. Congratulations on beating a tremendous fighter in Anthony Smith. Tonight, it wasn't his night. It's not the end of the road. He'll be back. He'll be back. He ain't going to give up. I keep seeing people in uh, in the chat saying, just retire. Someone says Anthony has his gloves off. He Frank does Williams have his gloves said. off. I did. Does see he really? Him. He does. He ain't going to retire. He's only 34. I can't see that. I can't imagine that. He is standing there uh, when they did the decision with uh, his gloves off. His yeah, hands. but sometimes they, they, your hands get very, very hot and yeah. they get very uncomfortable and the wraps get tight and and, and the the gloves on your hand, it be, they become very uncomfortable. 
And often mm-hmm. the first thing you want to do is get these goddamn gloves off. Right. So it doesn't always mean retirement. However, hold on, let's listen. What's Jamal Hill saying? Yeah, he's talking. Well, Johnny Walker's talking about Jamal. He's talking in Boha right now. So, I mean, well, he sounded like he was. He wasn't. Probably one fight away, but yeah, that does make sense. Uh, do uh, not hurt yourself dancing. You right, hold on, hold on. Listen, wait. All right, so Anthony's not retiring because if Thank he God. was, if he was, they would give him the microphone and give him his time. For sure. So he's, he's not retiring, so that's good to know. Listen, he's going to be down. Unless Clay he's Guido be, ruined it. He's going to be frustrated, you know, but the reality is you live and learn. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the road. You know, tough fight. Didn't get the job done. He's going to be disappointed. Um, but you don't give up, you know. When you do give up on yourself, that's when it's truly over. You know, you learn from your losses. You get better. Doesn't mean he can't do it. He can still be a champion. He does have all the skills. Came up short tonight, you know, but you've got to try try and stay strong mentally. That's the main part. You know, if you give up on yourself, it's all fucking over. You feel sorry for yourself, it's over. If you just say, I don't believe this, I don't deserve this, what the fuck's going on? Have a defeatist defeatist attitude. That's when it's truly done. It's over. You got to go back. Yeah, you're going to be sad. There's a healing process. You got through it. You come Monday morning, you're like, fuck it. All right, son of a bitch got me. Let's get back in the gym. Let's get back on the wagon. So I hope that's the attitude he has. And he will have that attitude. The man that I know is that guy. Babe, I'll a, take that chick for lay now. <laughs> he has a grappling tournament coming up with uh he has a grappling Glover. match with Glover soon. Yeah, Glover so, to share it. So he has, he doesn't have time to feel bad about a loss. He has to get right no. back in there and do the thing. And, and that'll be a good healthy distraction as well. You Absolutely. know what I mean? He's got something else to work towards. Oh dear. Taliban GB says I was smashed him, especially after talk that he did. What do you mean? What do you expect him to say? Why are you going to be a hater? Why are you going to come on here and, and talk crap? Listen, after the talk that he did, of course you're going to go into a fight confident. I'm assuming you've never stepped into a competitive realm in your life. If you go into something, you have to. You can't go in there expecting to lose. You go in there hoping to win. You do the work that you're going to win, and you have a positive mindset. You don't walk around going, oh, God, this is going to be really tough. This is going to, I don't know if I can do this. Because that means you're already fucking defeated, Taliban GB. Okay, so have a little look at yourself in the mirror. You shouldn't be celebrating the fact that somebody got beaten in a fight, in a pursuit, when they fucking put their life, their body, and their health on the line for your entertainment. You know, you should say, well, you know, fair play to Johnny Walker. We have to celebrate that. But you don't kick a man while he's fucking down. So if you want to go fuck off and unsubscribe and take your fucking $2 back, stick it up your fucking ass, you prick. I'm going to have a piss. I'll be right back. Carry yes, on. Yes, sir. Harrington's looking like Jonah Hill in War Dogs. Thanks, honestly. For, thanks for the bucks, Knox. It's a, it's that's a pretty good one. Get that is my bit. that's a hundred percent my style that I'm going for. There you go, man. Rough one, dude. He downed his opponent. Said he's not elite. Taliban, GB. Yeah, is that well, the same guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened to you unsubscribing and, and getting the hell out of here? I don't know, man. I thought Just that keep... was the rule. No, he's still throwing money. It's fine. Screw him. Uh, yeah. The uh, He didn't downplay his opponent. He literally said nothing but nice things about Johnny Walker, praised him, right, for being the high-level martial artist that he is. And, I mean, look, I stand by it, right? Every, everything that was said, Anthony Smith does have the better chin. The shots that he ate in that first round to stay in that fight, get the takedown, end up in top control. Like I said, there's no doubt in my mind, he won four minutes and 30 seconds of that first round. He got caught because he got a little frustrated with Johnny Walker turning into Floyd freaking Mayweather. Yeah, who saw that coming? That's understandable, right? Yeah. The guy's just landing low kicks on a on a, a, a previously injured limb. Screw him. Eh, whatever. Nothing but respectful to oh, Johnny Walker. Right then. Okay. Eric Hogan the says, uh, love you, Mike. Glad somebody said it. F that guy. Yeah, well, it is, I overreacted a little bit, but, you know. Also, why, well, what is it with the human race that takes so much pleasure in criticizing <laughs> someone and putting them down? I can honestly hand on heart. I don't On Twitter, I talk a bit of shit. I go at the trolls and things like that. Sure. But hand on heart, I don't think I've ever 
gone to a social media post and like talked shit and been a hater. And if you are the type of person that's out there doing that, I think that speaks volumes about the type of person that you are. Anyway, uh, what's all the haters in the chat? Me. There you go. You're um, go on. Mal, I'll I, take a bite. I had one, uh, not from 63rd. Uh, he said, and I, I, interesting, he said, Ann is too hesitant, output too low to win any rounds. Well, I mean, he was getting his leg chopped away. Right. And, uh, you know, that's you're going to be hesitant when you can't load up on your front leg. Like, I mean, he did keep catching Johnny Walker in bad positions and landing on him. It's just that Walker, like, you know, there was a new wrinkle to his game that no one could have, uh, no one could have expected, but I feel like he set up all of those shots really well, found great openings. Well, and, and so, that's credit to John Cavanaugh, I would imagine. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to pull this microphone closer now. I pulled it away whilst I was, scoffing a spicy chicken sandwich. I'm starving. Nice. First thing I've eaten all day. I didn't want to say this, but Johnny Walker's a dangerous man. And he's a very... Johnny Walker is capable of beating any human being on planet Earth. Sure. He, he really is. And it's not me saying this now to try and um, make an excuse for Anthony losing. You know what I mean? It was always... A tough fight to take because Johnny Walker burst onto the scene and was an incredible talent. He was a world beater when he first showed up. He knew that, that he was going to be something, he could be something special. You know, and some of his antics got the better of him. His, un his unpredictability, his unorthodox nature was a benefit to him because he caught people, but it also cost him some, some fights as well. And once you learn to control and tame that beast, you know what I mean? He he's, he's he's a very, very tough man. So it was always a really, really hard fight for Anthony to take. But that's where we're at. You're in the deep end of the UFC. There's no easy fights, you know? So, ah, uh, well. We've got lots of super chats here. Chubba Watson, bad result for the team. I hope he finds his mojo again. Walker was far more reserved than usual. Not reckless enough to counter. A few quid for the Smith and the team fund. Club of Watson, shout out, buddy. The man basically true fans are here for Anthony. Don't worry. Thank you, Madison Stevens. Rough loss. I think Johnny Walker could be UFC champ. He could be. I ram. This won't look bad for Anthony. I still think Anthony can beat him, but he was coming off a serious injury. It's correct. Good point. Some people have never competed in anything, and it shows. Correct. Ron Henderson. <laughs> shout out to Kellen War. Shout out Kellen War in the house. Let's get this back on a positive. Well, not a positive vibe. There's no positivity here. But we do have the main event coming up. We have a poll. Who do we think? Jailton and Almeida winning the poll right now. 62% of the chat. They're I think I like Almeida in this. I think I think he's he's up and coming. I think Rosenstruck has a lot of miles on him, too. I, I think everybody's counting out Rosenstrike. Rosenstrike at plus 400 is insane. If you can get a guy with one shot power like Jarzinho Rosenstrike at nearly four to one, uh, he's got a puncher's chance always. I haven't seen Almeida against somebody of Rosenstrike's caliber. Fair enough. <laughs> Have you seen the takedown ability, though? Of Almeida? Almeida? Oh, yeah. It's insane. His wrestling, his wrestling is ridiculous. So the approach for Rosenstroke is definitely going to be a Derek Lewis versus Curtis Blades approach. He's going to expect that takedown early. He's going to predict it. He's going to wait for it and just try and time an uppercut. That is, has, is going to be the strategy because Jalton Almeida is going to shoot a double leg. He's got extremely powerful takedowns. He drives right through people. He picks them up. He slams them down. And once he gets on top, he's a son of a bitch. In the best way possible, of course. So, um, yeah, that's what we're going to see here. We're going to see a very hesitant biggie boy waiting for the shot. And you never know. Sometimes when you're waiting for the shot, you get caught with the right hand or whatever it is. But I massively understand why Almeida, stylistically, is the favorite coming into this one. I'm How many people's on the chat, right? Bri? Uh, we've dropped down a little bit. People were excited to see Anthony fight. We're at 37, yeah. 3,733 people in the chat right now. We just keep well, getting sense, just makes sense. Keep shooting, get super chats ready for the one us. chip with that spicy chick reversion. I'm not doing a spicy chicken sandwich and the one chip challenge back to back. That would just be lunacy. 
Well, it's, it's training, you know? Yeah. Taking steps working up. Working my way up. Yeah, working exactly. my way up. Alex Barnes says love to you guys and Anthony. Respect to Harrington. And uh, for having Anthony's back, of course. Ellie Guy, yeah, cheers. Back. Alexandra Costa, you're a warrior, Anthony, and an inspiration. Much love and respect onward. Sort of yeah. says I could beat Johnny Walker in bowling, and I bet you you couldn't. I Salt bet. Bay, Brian McKay. That's a good one. Salt oh, Bay, man. Brian McKay. Uh, I'll take it, but I don't like it. <laughs> Salt McKay. We need a t-shirt of Brian Salt Bay McKay. Oh, dear. 55, uh, yeah, 59% I mean, of uh, Almeida winning the main event. Look at the size of him. That man I mean, is a specimen. Jesus. There's a few dudes in the UFC. There's very few dudes who look like that, you know? They're, they're just like marble statue men. Like All right, boys. From a chippy. Anthony, you attacked my family, Smith. Um, guys, please don't. Please speak and be honest. There's a lot of haters in here, and I don't like it. Yeah, I'm Come just on, paying boys. attention to the super chats, really. Yeah, the, the problem is you start reading it sometimes, and you don't know where it's going to go because I don't oh, yeah. scan the whole thing first. I just start reading, and I'm like, "Come on, guys, why are we trying to kick a man while he's down?" Listen, as I've said, congratulations to Johnny Walker. He exactly. was the better man tonight. He won the fight. It wasn't. I hope Anthony doesn't take this personally. It, I, it was probably the correct decision. You know what I mean? Uh, well, it wasn't a robbery. You know, he, he, right. Johnny Walker was the better man tonight, all right? But it still takes a lot of balls to step in there. And oh, yeah, yeah, and Anthony was confident. Of course, he should be. As I've said, that's the mindset you have to have. The 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 negativity that we're seeing in here now is 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 ridiculous. That's just going to happen when, uh, you know, if you're just looking at the general population chat, it's, it's, uh, it's anybody could just get in there, you know? Well, it's always a, a vocal minority. In yeah, everything, for sure is. in everything. I mean, all these issues that we have in life, you yeah. know, the, 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 these modern PC world issues, that's a small vocal minority without giving out any examples. The 100%. majority of people on a day-to-day -day basis do not care about these small, trivial little things that people seem to be getting so wound up over, but a very small uh, vocal minority. They're the ones making all the fucking noise and trying to bring in different laws and trying to fucking have books rewritten and all this type of stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just absolutely goddamn ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, interesting one in the uh, super chat here. Would you ever consider coaching Anthony Smith? Cornering I mean, Anthony Smith? That'd be a really tough one because I, I mean, I, I'd feel disrespectful even suggesting that. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, I, I, I do want to get into some coaching. Um, I'm going to teach some guest kickboxing classes at the Den soon, actually, where Lucas started training. And I do want to start coaching. Um, but I feel that me wading in, I'm going, hey, Anthony, let me coach you. It's like, hey, you lost that. I know what to do. I know what you're doing wrong. And that would be disrespectful to his whole team. You know, so I would never even think about saying that. Okay. Um, but in terms of myself coaching personally, I am now starting to get to a point in my life where I'm actually having a thirst to want to coach and give something back. And I think it all started with Lucas and then this young guy uh, called Jacob that I'm kind of like guiding along the way. This young man that stays there, that's a friend of Megan that used to live at our house. He was having dinner one night. I said, what do you want to do? He said, you're going to laugh, but I want to be a fighter. So I took him in the garage. Took him. Have we talked about this? No, never. This is so Yeah, weird. yeah. So, so, so Megan that lived with us for a while, we had her and her brother over for dinner. And uh, as I say, I was trying to talk to him and try and give advice. And what are you going to do with yourself? And he said, you're going to laugh when I say this, but I want to be a fire. And I said, really? And, you know, without getting into too much detail, you know, they, they, they've had it tough. So I said, can you fight? Have you had fights? He said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's six foot three at 135 pounds. So I said, come on, then. Let's get in the garage. So he never had any formal training. But I took him on the pads, trained him a little bit. I was like, dude. If you've never done anything and that's your first time, I said, that's really impressive. So this is how I stumbled upon this training center, the den, because I was looking for somewhere for him to train. So I signed him up to there and uh, I've been keeping an eye on him and popping in and like, you know, we're going to training him and trying to help him out along the way. Uh, so yeah, that's a little guy I've took under my wing. And when I went in there to watch him train at the den to see how he was getting along, Lucas was with me. And then when Lucas saw the setup, he was like, I want to do this. And as I say, all oh, this whole thing that's kind of sparked up 
an intrigue in me to want to start coaching. So there you go. Damn, that's you so start cool. The Michael Bisming school of ass kickers, dude. Yeah. Someone says, I like Ant as much as you guys do. What did you think about his ability to check those kicks? I think he did poor. I'm sad. Well, not from 63rd. I understand what you're saying. He was very aware of it. Let's think back to the start of the fight. He was raising that leg. He was anticipating the low kicks. Um, the reality is Johnny Walker was very effective tonight with those low kicks. He's fast. He's tall. He's got fast twitch muscle fiber covering his entire body. He's very explosive. He's very quick. And he's now learning to be disciplined as well. Um, so it, it's not so much what Anthony did bad. It's what Johnny Walker did well with that. You know, I mean, because let's think about this. There was a few times where there was low kicks came in two and three successions. Bum, 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 really quick with the same leg. That's yeah. an incredibly difficult thing to do physically to do that. You know what I mean? That's really hard. And that just shows, as I say again, and I'm not riding the coattails of Anthony. I'm saying that wasn't what Anthony did bad. It's what Walker was doing good. The low kicks were very effective. I feel like I've heard you talk about it time and time again. Also, like the calf kicks are nearly impossible to check. And that's all that Johnny Walker was throwing. Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a way of checking them. You kind of lift your foot up to your ass, if you will. Uh, yeah. Look, listen, it's it, it, it was it was Johnny Walker's night. It was Johnny Walker's night. And we'll have to wait to hear from Anthony. Don't shoot him a link now or anything like that because he's not going to be happy. He's not going to be in a good place. Certainly isn't want to going to want to come on the podcast and talk about it. Amanda England, uh, that is um what was she called? What was she called? She fought she was a fight. Oh, I forget her name now. She's a little cute little thing. She fought in Sacramento. She got knocked out against well, I shouldn't say that. That's not what she's known for. Anyway, that's a stepmom. I forget her bloody name. Uh Headman Slug. Mike, serious question. Why did you say you attacked my family? Is there something that happened in private that we don't know about? I have no idea what you're talking about there. Are you talking about Aspen Lad? Aspen Lads, yeah. Aspen Lad stepmom in the chat there. Oh, uh, Club, Club of Watson. I don't understand why people want to push retire following a hiccup or two. Exactly. If that was the case, we wouldn't have a UFC. If you fail, you shouldn't quit. You just work harder or change the approach. Clubber Watson, you said that absolutely perfectly. And this is a thing that people do say when they lose, like, and I'm talking about uh, Jake Paul here. You know, don't define me by my wins, define me by my losses. And that's something that's handy for Jake Paul to say now because he did just get beat. But it is that, and it is that what inspires people. You know, it's all we love and the main event starting right now. We'll talk about that in a second. We love seeing somebody that can go out there and dominate everyone that's way head and shoulders above everybody else and be so talented and take the world by storm a la Conor McGregor when he was on the rise. You know what I mean? That's amazing. And it inspires people and it's incredible. But I think more people resonate with the guy that goes out there and fails and falls. And there's the first takedown attempt Garcino. from Almeida. Big it's shot. Defended it. Takedown. Yeah, and he stopped it. I mean, 75% yeah. takedown defense in his career for Jarzino Rosenstrike. So he defended that well. That's going to send a big message to Almeida. But oh, I, just yeah. to finish that point, you know, those people that go out there, they try, they win some, then they fail. And then they keep going and they fail. And without sounding like a wanker, like I've disappeared on my own backside, that's a message that I get from a lot of people all the time. Because, because, same for me. Do you know what I mean? People said the same thing, thing about me. Oh, he gets Another it. takedown attempt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, and Almeida yeah, has a hundred percent finish rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a monster. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the journey is far from over for Anthony. Absolutely. He's thirty-four years old. You know. So chill with that one. Anyway. Yeah, I just so the, I just saw him with his gloves off in the cage. So I was like, oh, that's. Y yeah, it's always concerning. Yeah, but sometimes you're hot. Like Derek Lewis took his shorts off in the cage. That didn't mean anything. <laughs> So this is really troubling now for Rosa Struck. He's on his back with Almeida. Yeah. It's three minutes 50 into round one. You know, you're not super slippery. And he's in the center of the octagon. Center of the octagon, even harder, unless you've got really good jujitsu sweeps or you can get two feet on the hips and kick them off. But Almeida now has passed the half guard. Rosa Struck's got to be careful here. One wrong move, he can push that right knee of Biggie Boy to the side. There it is. Now he's going to pull that leg through, and he's going to get full mount. Nicely defended, though, by Rosenstrike. 
see the downward pressure of Almeida, see where the yeah. head is, and he's driving that shoulder in. That's really, really uncomfortable. Jeez. And now the right foot is on the instep, or, or on the inside of the thigh. So now he's going to pull that left leg through. He's going to use that foot to anchor where the thigh is and then pull his left leg through and, again, potentially into mount. That's what he's looking for. It looks like he was just oh. squeezing his head. Big knee to the body. Uh, Jordan says, I've had many nights out in, in Newcastle. Do you know what? I haven't. I haven't had many nights out in Newcastle. One of the only times was when I had my MMA debut at Pride and Glory, one of Ian Freeman's show, shows up. And we went out there, and I think there was one other time. So, yeah, not many nights out in Ooh. Newcastle. How are you, man? How are you, the boys? Uh, Ryan, Z uh, Ryan Zamparipa uh, just sent in a super chat. I want Smith versus Craig for main card in UK. It's a good fight. I like that. It's not a bad fight. July, quick turnaround now. Very quick. May, April. May, no. June, July. I was I was going backwards. He'd I'm have to go like him. right back into camp. He's like hitting him with short little knees and uh, rabbit punches to the face. He's like, him smushed up against the cage right now. Oh man, just the cutest girl in Charlotte, North Carolina, looking at her phone in the front row. <laughs> it's <laughs> just there's nothing like that. It's so fun. See, he's past guard now, right round to the other side. And it's kind of interesting because oh. yeah, he's moved him off the side of the octagon. Biggie boy, he's got to get a wizard. See that right arm? He's got to put that over the arm of Almeida. Otherwise, he's giving up the back. That's precisely what he's doing now. See, so many people make this mistake. They try to oh, rush back to mount. their feet. Now it's full mount. Giving he's up the go back. To work. Almeida's underneath the chin. It's over. It's, it's not it's under over. the chin, but no? it's going to be over in a second. Yeah. He's got one minute yeah, 20. Look at taps, the size of the taps. map. There's the top. There's the top. Yeah. And there it is. It's done. Uh, Jalton Almeida told yeah. you. What do you think force. he st packed, uh, stacks up at the top end of heavyweight? I don't know, but we've been going now for two hours, 25 minutes. I am currently already 30 minutes late for my friend's birthday party. <laughs> it started at 12. It started at 12. We said, get there for two. It's now 2.30. I've got to change. I'm going to, you know, jazz myself up a little touch. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to borrow um, my shirt? I do actually. I yeah. I went to the mall last night. I'm like, I need some new clothes, and it was just nothing but crap, nothing yeah. but crap. Because like, I don't like to wear stupid designer gear. You know what I mean? Believe it or not, with stupid fucking labels all over them, yeah, you just feel like a douchebag. So I was yeah. like, You're just I, wearing I, a I like, billboard for Gucci. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not that guy anyway. I like a nice quality piece of clothing, and I don't mind if it's designer, but I don't want brands emblazoned all over it because you just feel like a knob. Yeah, um, those jackets that have just like candy bar wrappers all over them. Well, well that's I'll kind of what it. was in the mall last night. It was just a yeah. bunch of weirdness. It was like, I mean, what, there was like, oh, I went to Saks Fifth Avenue. You know what I mean? There's nice stuff there. But like, they had all these hoodies and sweaters and t-shirts and it just had like uh, video game pictures, but like really, what's it called? The pixels, really pixelated. Yeah. I'm like, what is all this crap? Anyway, boys and girls, what I'm doing now, I'm setting up the goodbye because <laughs> I got to go. Let's get a live BYM in UK. Steve Ruskin, you're absolutely right. And we will do that for sure. Uh, but I think this is time to call this one a day, boys. That sounds right. Yeah, man. It was a good card. Sorry, Anthony it was. Smith lost. It was a disappointing result, obviously. Uh, so our condolences. And... Anthony, we all love you, brother. We're all proud of you. Takes Absolutely. a real man to get in there. We'll hopefully we'll talk to him on Monday if he feels up for it. I'm sure he will. He's not. He's, he's not that type of guy. No, nah. he's not the type of guy to cower away and he not showed up when his people. leg was broken. Correct. So uh, yeah, you guys, thanks for all watching. If you haven't subscribed and rang the bell, please do so. Please just do so. Two hundred k subscribe. subscribers. Yeah, exactly. Subscribe and ring the bell, though. We should be on a million subscribers by now. Uh, so you guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekends. Anthony and Brian, as always. Sorry, Anthony and Brian. Mike and Brian. Love you, boys. Take care. Mike, talk about the brain after an injury. What does that do to your head? And is in his prime. Next fight, he fights with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, yeah. All right, boys and girls, thank you all for watching. That is it. Brian, hit end that live stream, baby. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs>